link and story. Oh my god, that's what I'm talking about. I think we're live. I hope we're live. It, well, you know what? It all. doesn't even matter for a lot, boy. I, I'm just happy we're just gonna to be in your two hours. company today. We're Corey. just vibing on a Saturday, Greg. <laughs> yeah. Just vibing on a Saturday. Citizens of the Reject Nation, I am doing the intro just in case we are actually live. I don't know if we have succeeded or not, but welcome to the live stream. Hey, if we're live in the chat, can you tell us if you can hear yeah, us? Hearts, that's a good sign. Just need a just need a confirmation here. Just emotionally. Anyone at all? I need to know the audio's working. It's been a while since Greg has had to do the tech here, <laughs> and I'm just trying to make sure we're, we're live. Good. We're live, and you can hear us. That is the most important thing yes. that we need right now. John's actually getting a Saturday, so we're in here learning as we go. He'll be in here in a couple hours. Never boy. mind. I take it back. <laughs> yeah. Greg's getting uh, a Saturday evening. John's getting a Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much to everyone who waited patiently for us to go live. This is going to be a really fun time. I can feel it, I can Coy. feel it. I sense it. I, I, I conserve my energy for this. I feel like it's going to be a lot of energy. Thank you to our first Super Chat. We do not end a stream until we go through all Super Chats and Streamlabs. It is an amazing way to support the channel. We really do appreciate it, and uh, it's a great excuse to keep staying live. Even when we're like, ah, we should end. No, you guys keep us live with your hard-earned dollars. <laughs> really appreciate it. Also... Um, leave a like on the stream. Yes. I think we should just hop right into it. But first, want to shout out a few people who are here. We got Greg McCauley saying Greg's Unite. Coy, shout someone out, would you? Uh, Nora Mack is in here. I saw Christian Unpronounceable at the top, who is here and at uh, Break Room very often. I appreciate him very much. Ronan Unchained, we saw at WonderCon last week. He was at week. WonderCon. Just last week. Thank you to all who came out to our WonderCon panel. That was a lot of fun. That was the most existential and impactful and poetic panel I've ever been a part of. And I do panels for a living. It was a strange one because of how sincere yeah, and, like and for was. for a snarky, ironic, uh, sarcasm fueled channel, it yeah. was very sincere. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I liked it. I really enjoyed people connecting and it actually being about the humanity of the channel because something we don't get to talk about a lot because of the aforementioned sarcasm. Absolutely. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, um, yeah, uh, super chats and all that do help out with the channel, and because playback on these are always a little bit finicky, and you never know, Koi might slip up and get us demonetized. Sometimes That's I say C words, but I'm not gonna. Ever. I've learned. I've gotten so much better. I I say new words that are probably <laughs> yeah. but I learned from my mistakes. Koi, I think we should just kick off the stream immediately. Immediately. Let us talk about this female Silver Surfer casting news that is going down. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about Matrix 5. We want to talk about John Bernthal returning, whatever else you guys got as well. Um, I want to talk about Supergirl. Do you? <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. Koi was like, put it in the thumb. And, I'm and like, you're like, not going to happen. I don't think today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But a uh, female silver surfer, uh, it's being quite the controversy. You're seeing the arguments happening on the sphere. Yep. You know, it's like some are like, hey, don't don't you read the comics? It happens. Some are going woke. Others are going, uh, yeah, I get it happens in the comics, but you should start off with the uh, original silver surfer. There's all kinds of thoughts running around the atmosphere. Now, before Koi goes on a tangent, and I know that's who you guys want to hear, we're just revving up Koi. Right now, he is just <laughs> he's ready, waiting for that light to turn green while Greg just stalls for time here for him. Um, I am like, I'll wait. I don't really care. That's my opinion. <laughs> I don't really have a strong, passionate <laughs> opinion about it. <laughs> like, Let's just wait and see. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather just wait to find out if it... If it all turns out all right in the end, because that's all we can really do. You know, how many times have we gotten mad at casting and then the casting comes out and we're like, wow, never mind. Every that Batman. was excellent. Now, granted, I know Marvel's been a bit of a finicky journey, but I know they really want to nail this. So I'm just going to hold out hope because we want to bring a little bit of positivity to a platform that can so easily just be the same echo chamber of rage bait. Koi, how are you? You tell us what's going on, my friend. Okay, so the casting of Julia Garner is really interesting because of the way Marvel casts. I think what happened here is much like Chadwick Boseman came in for Drax on Guardians and then was cast in Black Panther, I think both Anya Taylor-Joy, Julia Garner, and... 
Kirby all came in for Sue Storm, and in this case, it ended up being her cast as Shala Ball. Now, what's interesting about that to me is I would personally, if I was telling this story, have her character be a way to illustrate a multiverse of different characters illustrating that in this universe, the ones we start with the Fantastic Four in, because we know they're trapped out of time, but are they also trapped out of space? Have the Silver Surfer of their universe be Shala Ball, who is the wife of Norrin Rad, who is introduced in the same issue, Silver mm. Surfer number one. Nor like Norrin Rad is the OG Silver Surfer in the sense of pop culture. And yes, he is the Silver Surfer, but but Shala Ball is just as old of a character. She just doesn't have as many appearances, isn't as uh, well known. But to to deny the impact of the Silver Surfer is very tricky because Silver Surfer isn't as big of a character as a Reed Richards. He's not as big as Fantastic Four. He is a very big character, but I do think there is a little bit more flexibility of having in a universe a Shala Ball Silver Surfer, and then when they come to our universe, then have it be Norrin Rad, and then it's a commentary on like, oh, we must be somewhere else because in our universe, my, it's blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I don't think uh, Shala Ball is going to be the 1610, 616, or depending on 199999 Silver Surfer. I think it's going to be this new universe we meet with the Fantastic Four, and then when we come to our 199999 universe, that is going to be the Norrin Rad everyone knows and loves. My only concern, to be honest, isn't with a female Silver Surfer, isn't with a female Herald of Galactus, because that's what she is. In the comics, Shala Ball is a Herald of Galactus. She actually isn't the Silver Surfer, and I can't tell if it's misreporting. How many times has an article been like, this person has been cast as this, and they were kind of right? She could, at the end of the day, just be a Herald of Galactus. At the end of the day, she could be the wife of Norrin Rad, as we know and, and see. So I'm with Greg on just waiting and finding out. But what I'm worried about is just Julia Garner not getting enough screen time. Because I, I, if she's just like a wife of Norrin Rad, or if she's only the multiversal one, I'm like, what a waste of one of the best parts of Ozark. Like, she's so talented. So I don't care if she's the Silver Surfer, because I don't personally think... The things that make me think about Silver Surfer are ethereal, uh, very watchful, a commentary on humanity, this alien presence that looks on. I've always thought of Keanu huh. Reeves because of the way he philosophizes about humanity. I was th it was ironic they're paired because like, he's been my Silver Surfer since the 90s. But the way sh the Silver Surfer character is a commentary on us is by being an outside ethereal source that watches over us. And to me, that's Anya so Taylor-Joy was that. That's so weird because I think about... Big balls. Big balls. Just And I it's funny because he's one of the only characters yeah. that clearly doesn't have a dick. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, of all the characters, I know at least he doesn't. He's a eunuch. Very clearly. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, more if accurate. anything, you guys should be mad they didn't cast a real eunuch. Yeah, come on. Let's be comic accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't he silver? That's uh, Before color. we cast, we're going to need to see if you have genitalia. <laughs> can you go ahead and drop those? Uh, I know there's been some Weinstein issues, but yeah. can you go ahead and drop those? <laughs> uh, so, for me, I'm going to wait and see, but uh, there is some actual, <laughs> there's some reasoning behind this. So, uh, you know, not only is this movie tears out, not only is Marvel trying not to piss everyone off, but... We don't know what this person is going to be doing in the movie. Uh, that being said, it's very funny to just make a post and see the internet explode. I don't think that's the intention, but it has been entertaining. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, those are all very valid points. Cool. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I just don't. Uh, I, I don't know. There's something about Marvel right now where I know myself to know the trajectory that I go on as a fan. I hear news and I go, all right. And then I watch the trailer and I'll go, oh, sweet. <laughs> and then before I watch the movie, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Let's see how this goes now. <laughs> yeah, that that's two and a half how, minutes was great. That's How's how, the two hours going to go? That's how it tends go? to be for me <laughs> on this journey now. Mm -hmm. And I just hold out going, let's see. I just, I want, that's all I really care about. And I agree. She might not ha get the most succinct amount of screen, uh, you know, uh, screen time, but it's the MCU. And, you know, they cast someone, the plan is to keep them circulating for a while. Mm -hmm. And even though I know they've been introducing a lot of characters and not bringing them back, I feel like they would have a very different plan when it comes to the Fantastic Four and said Silver Surfer. But the question goes to you guys in the chat right now. I appreciate that most of you guys are keeping it level-headed. Obviously, there's some people who uh, just love a good capital W word, very much so. Uh, just tell us in your comments, what do you guys think? And I know we got some super chats that we got to get to, but I want to keep us on track first and foremost to make sure we are honoring the main thing you guys showed up for, but keep them coming in. We will power through them all with quality, and we don't end a stream until we get through them all. Koi, let's talk about the next bit of news, my friend. What do we got? We're trying a different approach here. Um, 
John Bergthal returning as the Punisher. We got set photos. Oh, my God. You know, if John was here, he would have prepared this. <laughs> he would have definitely got it here. Guys, leave a like on this stream. I got to find a Punisher photo just to slap it on screen really Entertainment quick. Weekly had good quality ones, if that helps. There's Entertainment Weekly. Entertainment Weekly. But Greg quite... types in variety. Greg uh, hears yeah. me. He acknowledges me. There's a good me. one right he here. Look at this variety. one. That's a great one. It is a great one. I'm just, a, I'm just saying they had I mean, exclusives. we know the photos. It's just very funny. It's they very were like, similar I'm going to say it out loud and type other words in. It's, that's how I operate, All right, Coy. well, this is how we're going to do this. Is this the other main photo? That's a great photo. Damn. That's beautiful. Look what at that. What a weird tease. It's, these are clearly active. Look me, at these I gotta, candies. I got to pull it on screen here. I got to pull it on screen. Okay, hold on. Koi, start hold. talking while I pull it up, please. Okay, uh, my excitement for Daredevil was already astronomically high. He's one of our favorite characters of all time. My I do believe he's your favorite MCU show. So uh, it, I think that Daredevil might be the best adaptation of Marvel. Like, I, I think it, it might be better than... I think it's up there with Winter Soldier. It's it's one of the best things we've seen from the world of Marvel Comics. So the expectations are high, and I'm glad they've decided to go more of a season four route than starting over with the same cast. But I am always worried up until certain actors go, no, no, I only come back if the script is good. John Bernthal is one of those actors. John Bernthal is a man with integrity. John Bernthal is a man <laughs> who loves Frank Castle. John Bernthal Bernthal's is a man. A man of integrity. Uh, <laughs> dude, I, I've, I've been very lucky to run into John Bernthal like three or four times. And every time we have any sort of conversation, it always ends with this moment of, you know when you like read a really good piece of like philosophy and it's like two sentences and you're like, I feel really better and like yeah. he's one of those guys that he's so well spoken articulate that i usually try not to talk about punisher with him because i'm sure he's exhausted by it i like talking to him about what it means to be an artist that's also hyper masculine i really love his view on masculinity and off that ties into punisher so it tends to go that direction but what i love about john bernthal is he doesn't need to come back to this character he's got so many other things he's got so many other like you know he, he loves doing plays he loves his podcast he's he doesn't need this and so for him to come back i think the script must have been amazing and then to top that off my boys uh aaron and justin who crushed loki season two uh are on the property and uh, again a shameless name drop i'm so sorry but it is relevant uh, when I did the Tom Hiddleston panel, it was the one of the first times he talked about season two after wrapping season two back in Megacon. I got a full hour with Tom Hiddleston. And then after the panel, he had a ton of places to be. But during the panel, I mentioned I was friends with Aaron and Justin and we got to like talk about them like as people and it was really fun to like see his love for them as directors but as soon as we got off stage he was like dude i'm so excited about <laughs> Justin doing daredevil and it was this really beautiful moment where tom hiddleston is such a fan of loki and the marvel universe it was really beautiful that he got to talk about it as a fan because he got to be invested in something his friends are doing in a character he cares about with his other friend charlie cox and it was such a really beautiful moment to see him be a nerd that wasn't personally invested in it. Yeah. And so his excitement reminded me like, oh, just because this is your day job doesn't mean it can't still be special. And I feel like John Bernthal has that with The Punisher, like his posts about it, the way he gets excited when people bring it up, the, the way he treats people at cons. John Bernthal always has the longest line and he's always there until like 6 a.m. Like that guy stays. And I and I just really respect him. And I don't think he'd come back unless it was the right pieces. So these photos give me a very specific warmth. Well, you know, the thing about John Bernthal is I think we can always be guaranteed that he's going to deliver a fantastic performance, regardless of whatever the material ends up even being. We know he's going to do a great job. Take Punisher season two, for example. Not a great season. He's still excellent. I would say the same thing for Charlie Cox and even Vincent D'Onofrio uh, as, as Kingpin, right? Now, I had the same feeling I had when I saw these. I was it's weird because there was a few years ago where if I saw these photos that they're coming to the MCU, they're being revived, it would have been an instant rejoicing type of automatic feeling, right? And like we were part of the camp that still enjoyed Echo overall. Yeah, overall. Overall still enjoyed it. Had our issues, but overall still enjoyed it. We talked very much in depth about a lot of the criticism stuff. Overall swayed a little bit more towards. I liked it. And um I, I, but I got to say it somehow did not bolster my enthusiasm for Kingpin. Mm. Like it was better than Hawkeye. I was relieved to see him and I think they're in the right direction, but at this point I'm I, I'm like I don't think they should just be in direction territory they should have been there by they now. should be yeah, in they the should, territory they not should, going to it exactly and 
I, I actually I feel bad for the original people who were hired for this show. Oh, uh, can you imagine being cast as an actor? I mean, like, I finally did it. I'm in Marvel. Yeah. Not just Marvel. I'm in Daredevil. New show. Yeah, well, to be cast in it, and, and then they were the writers, and they got the overhaul for it, and now they're, they have to fire people. They're starting all over. In a lot of ways, it's like I feel bad for them at the same time that must mean they really care to get this one right because they're obviously hearing the feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's one thing with Disney, all these reports that keep coming out is like, Bob Iger, what do you think about being called woke? You know, like everything is just in their face. With Thank you guys for all the super chats that keep pouring in right now. <laughs> Promise we are going to get through all of them. We just want to get through the main topics first, but this is great. Thank you. Great. Oh, it gets me excited. Yes. Um, People are invested. So uh, right now I'm like, yeah, this this aesthetically and everything, this is cool. I'm excited to see that him and Red are going to be back together sharing the screen again. And I know that it's going to be, like, uh, uh, well acted. And the blood, uh, it's, take the, the Echo trailer. It looked like <laughs> it was going to be, like, this is going to be a hard R. And then that, that just a set visit, like, it looks like a hard R. Like, yeah. just covered in but will it, you know, and Punisher is a hard R. Granted, this is Daredevil, but Daredevil's a pretty hard R, too. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the, the head slamming in the car door happened in yeah. Daredevil, not Punisher. But remember in Echo, the Echo trailer, we were like, oh, shit. And that He's was back. A, that was about it, <laughs> what was in the trailer. I think Echo and was a so, bridge yeah. between Disney Plus and Netflix, and now we're going back to Netflix. I think I, that was that a, is a the great hope. gateway if yeah. this lands like we hope it does. And if you haven't seen Aaron uh, Moorhead and, and, and Justin Benson's other work, um, they're a dark existential, like their stuff is really weird and out there and, and, and on the darker side. So if you're going to do a character like Daredevil, I think that's the move. Um, I don't know. I, I have a lot of hope because of the people involved. And, and I think I used to feel that with, you know, phase one, like you see a director attached and you're like, ooh, this is going to be their thing. I do think they got a lot longer of a leash on Loki than most of the phase four people did. Mm -hmm. So that gives me hope for them going into this, that they'll actually be able to do their thing on it. And so will the actors. Mm -hmm. And it, it also looks like this is going to be going towards, you know, Kingpin as mayor. This is going to be going towards, you know, the registration stuff. This, this leads to X-Men with the world that hates and fears them. Like there's so much in Daredevil, but he's also his own guy. I think it's going to be contained in Hell's Kitchen like we want Spidey to be. So I'm, I'm so excited for this. Absolutely. Oh, my God. This has been going so good, and I have not been doing any backup recordings, boy. Oh, no. Fail. Well, fail. See how that goes next week with our fail remote version of it. all around. This is how it begins. Fail. We anyway, guys, uh, listen, uh, we, we, we do want to be able to go to uh, – what do you guys think, though, about the Punisher thing? Do us ask the question. Are you excited for Punisher coming back? We Leave will. a comment, too. If we don't see it here, uh, that is, you know, we can see it. It lives there. We will get into the, since we have a lot of Super Chats pouring in right now, we are going to get in, and I've been loving the comments that you guys are coming in. Overall, pretty fair chat, yeah, I got to say. I'm, a, I'm very I reject think nation. A, I think it's a fair chat, everyone. I, and people that are, even if they're not excited, they're being articulate, not just saying, like, buzzwords, which I respect. There are the occasional buzzwords, but it's so, so small. I, yeah. I'm really impressed, guys. Thank yeah. you for giving me faith in the internet. This is a good occasion. community. This is a good community Reject right Nation's now. I'm, a, I'm enjoying the vibe overall. Even if you, and we just want you to be honest without being punished, unnecessarily punishing other people you don't need to punish. I love that vibe. Anyway, uh, let's let's hop into these supers. We'll catch up here and we'll talk a little bit about our Matrix thoughts as as the Matrix one B. Is it one of your favorites? One of, uh, it, it is it, tied it, for first. It, well, really, for me too. It yeah. is. It is I tied have two for first. First, it depends on my mood. Is it Fight Club? Yeah. Okay. What's your yeah. other? Terminator 2. Oh, Very funny. similar. Films. We're just such bros. Yeah, yeah. I love that we like love the modern era of filmmaking, but we're both like 99 and earlier yeah. are like our anchors. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the Fight Club and The Matrix are, it depends on my mood, but they're both my yeah. my favorite film. Thank you guys for the really nice comments you guys got here. All right, let me uh, let me load the supers and I'll check the stream labs in a second. Koi, talk to the chat while well, Greg fixes everything on the stream. Yeah, please. he's going to fix everything. Uh, the Matrix 5, <laughs> not 4. It's been funny to see how many people are reporting on it as Matrix 4 when Matrix actually had a fourth installment come out last year uh, or the year before. Let's time. But uh, the Matrix is getting another installment. Not a lot of details out there except for that it is Drew Goddard, which is a great tangent from Daredevil because Drew Goddard is the reason we have the Daredevil show. He is the one that got it going uh, over at Netflix. And Drew Goddard is actually the only negative about this uh, besides my fear of the Wachowskis not being involved at all, which is what it seems to be, is that Drew Goddard was my hope for Spider-Man 4. I really wanted Drew Goddard on Spider-Man 4. He wrote a Sinister Six script. 
uh, in the Amazing Spider-Man era. The guy has been trying to make a Spider-Man movie since Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man. I thought it'd be great to have him take over for John Watts if someone was going to, but uh, it seems like that is not happening because he'll be busy handling my tied for first favorite franchise over with uh, The Matrix. Um, I think that The Matrix 2 and 3, if they were one movie, um, are is a really exceptional thing. I think it kind of has that like prequel trilogy thing where I need Topher Grace to make it one movie. Um, <laughs> Matrix 4, I uh, have not read revisited and i need to i think i was too there was a matrix thing called the matrix revisited i need to visit the documentary well. thing it was I the first documentary it. about but the matrix the animatrix is sensational i guess we're talking about the matrix we're talking about Greg the matrix. struggles to set up the street it's, it's <laughs> happening i'm trying but drew goddard is really good at making very very dense material approachable uh i think drew goddard is very good at reading pop culture and where we are and i think the matrix is those two things in a big way it's got to be a commentary it's also got to be very present to the time and i think that it's exciting exciting to get an idea and the matrix is something that can be rebooted i think it'd be a cool thing to call I it think matrix they should have called it matrix i think they should have called the fourth one matrix reboot i think they're gonna call this one that though because it seems so obvious at four that's true. that's the plot that's so it's very like true. so maybe they will now because it's a new new squad yeah you know i mean since we are talking about the matrix as we're loading this uh i will say that uh, my initial reaction was like you sh you shouldn't do this without um the wachowskis that that was honest, no, that was my, my knee jerk too. first reaction was like i don't know guys um, that actually doesn't sound like a great idea because <laughs> their voice is so tied to it. However, the world of the Matrix, I was actually reminded of the Animatrix. Oh, in the video game. Which is, you know, they they were, uh, the Wachowskis were not, they, I don't know, they might have helmed like one or I two of them. they produced but all of it and they oversaw some of them. Yeah, and they, but they allowed people to direct and write play into in the world. Matrix world and play in the world. And the, and the world is quite expansive. And I'd, I'd say the same, for, like they're involved with the games and everything. But the passion for the Matrix world has clearly left them behind. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, only one of them directed the newest. Yeah, and I look, I, I know that that movie's like a constant up for debate for a lot of people as to like I really don't like that movie. <laughs> I'm not I need to revisit it because my <laughs> first instinct wasn't. Uh, I I wasn't saw it. Good. I saw it the first time and I I I loathed it. I really didn't like it. And then the second time, it I is funny how quickly it's happening though, because that whole movie yeah. is about the studio ripping it out of their hands and making their own, and now it's yeah. happening. So it is becoming the re it is cyclical. Yeah, it is now becoming. It is. It's like the movie telegraphed the trajectory of what would happen with the, the Matrix franchise. It, though, I just put together like within three years of the movie release, like they're like Warner Brothers made us make this movie so that we had to keep our rights to it, and then they're gonna make their own three years later. Like yeah. it's so fast. Uh, I think they should. I agree. I don't think they should bring back Neo in there. Even though I feel like he's the big appeal, I feel like one thing that they can that Drew Goddard can do to at least save his ass in some way is new is, characters is uh, good action because oh, yeah, the you action, have to. I think one thing we can all agree on for the mo most of us, Matrix Resurrections did not have great action. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about the Matrix. You got to be at all. You got to be philosophical. You got to be, uh, you know, you got to talk about like religion. You also you have to reinvent the wheel every gotta, time, which is do, impossible. You got to be like cool and sleek and freaky. Like you got to be badass at the same time. You have a great action, great visual and effects. And prophetic. Good luck. You have to be all these things uh, at once. And, and uh, I think Drew Goddard, I, I, he doesn't strike me as a guy who would just be aesthetically chosen. If anything, I feel like he'd bring great characters to life. I love that. Bringing Will Smith in. I should can, do a yeah. multiverse that is of the Matrix. so good. Yeah. If you guys don't know, Will Smith turned down the role of Neo. He was the first choice. It was it was supposed to be Will Smith, and he didn't get the script and, and turned it down, and that's one of his biggest regrets. I would love if the Matrix reboots with a new one, and it's Will yeah. Smith as a way of commentary on second chances. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's fun. Um, but I'm going to, again, that's one I'm going to hold out hope for. I don't believe that it has to just be the Wachowskis to do it. I do think that other people I mean, it's a big world they've it's created huge let and them play I, in the sandbox and the i think about it, do it before daily yeah. i think about the matrix daily I it's one of those movie. movies that i i it's honestly every time there's anything that's just left of center i think of the matrix like it's so embedded in my mind in a way that i think a lot of people like have i think religion is something that lives with people that are religious and have faith that like if something happens they're like they they fill in the blank with like whatever their faith is like i don't know terminology but like whatever their blank is 
<laughs> Matrix is that for me. Like, yeah. I, I literally have an undercurrent of belief system around this really cool concept. I'm not saying, like, I think the movie is, like, my doctrine, but I do think the concepts in it resonate with me to that level, that I think of it that often. So I really am hopeful for a new version, and, and I'm hoping it feels the same and exciting, and I just hope it's kinky. Yeah, I hope it's kinky. It's got to be kinky. I, I hope they it can bring us something that f- it gets us really invested in the characters because as much as I actually I love Matrix Reloaded a lot, I really do. Mm. Um, I like eighty percent of Matrix. Reloaded. I I love that movie. I, I like, I, but the first Matrix was the only one I think that actually had really strong strong characters. Where oh yeah, I rooted for them, <laughs> and but so I think that's what Drew Goddard Drew Goddard can get down is that. But anyway, guys, um, that's the main topics for today. Let's see what you guys all got in store here. Again, been loving what's going on in the chat right now. You guys are being so positive, and uh, I, I appreciate just uh, how fair I feel like most people are actually being right now in the chat. It really means a lot. Um, anywho, let's hop into the Super Chats, shall we? Let's do it. We have it right here on screen. Robert Pressur, thank you so much for being our first Super Chat of the day, my friend. means a lot to have your support. Uh, I can't stand the quote-unquote MCU comments. Shala Ball isn't a new character. It doesn't take more than a two-minute Google search to look that up. Ain't that the truth? Um, yeah, but I, they didn't really announce. The headline wasn't really Shala Ball. It was they keep s- saying female server. server. So that's what we did. And I also don't that's know. What people are typing in. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and we don't know. Like, even the deadline article says Shala Ball version of Silver Surfer. But we don't know that for sure yet, right? Until they say it on stage or yeah. an official press release. That's what's so tricky is we also got, like, what was it, last week? Teen Titans movie was confirmed by some people, but James Gunn hasn't confirmed it. So I I, it? I think it's confirmed, but I don't know. Like, it's yeah. really interesting, this, uh, this era of if you type it and press send and then later on apologize. Like, you want the clicks. So... Yeah. She might just be Shala Ball. It might not be a Silver Surfer. If she is a Silver Surfer, there's a lot of things they can do. But I do agree that the uh, the knee jerk reap- reaction to MCU is uh, disappointing. Definitely, Star Lord. Thank you for being our numero dos for the day. Uh, appreciate the super chat, my friend. Koi, why don't you read it? Fun first question: Who wins in a fight between Marvel's Armadillo or Rhino in a cage fight? I'm personally going to give it to Rhino. I think Armadillo overall has a little bit more of a very pun intended softer underbelly. I think uh, Armadillo has a little bit more compassion for who he's fighting. Rhino has compassion for his family. Rhino has compassion for kids. Uh, One of my favorite stories ever with the Rhino is the Tangled Web of Spider-Man. I think it's issues... 13 and 14. It's it's later into the run, but it's a two-issue Rhino story um, that is so beautiful and so heartwarming, and it really shows what he's compassionate about, but I don't think he's compassionate for the people he's fighting, whereas Armadillo eventually becomes the babysitter for Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman's children, and they actually fall in love, and Armadillo becomes like an actual love interest, and he reforms, and he becomes a good guy. Rhino has become a good guy from time and time again, but he always falls back into a life of crime. I believe Armadillo can reform. I don't think Rhino can all the way, so I'm giving it to Rhino out of bloodlust. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you thought he was going to get that thoughtful of an answer, but he got it. No, moving on is great, man. <laughs> it's great stuff, great what stuff. What do you think, Greg, oh, about dude, Rhino dude, and Armadillo? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, um, Shala Ball is going to be in the MCU, guys. Yeah, that's what uh, it's about. Robert Prusser, back in here again. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Rhino, hands down, is what Aisha says. Someone with Aisha in the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is saying, also, if they really wanted to, they could have used Norin's origin for Shella. Or Shala, a person saves their loved one and planet by becoming Galactus's herald. Well, you wrote that Ex- in the past tense. It could still Ex- be. Expand. Uh, so basically, uh, Norrin Rad is a character who is madly in love. It's a love story. He's madly in love with his wife, Shala Ball. And the planet that Galactus is uh, overtaking and consuming, because Galactus, the daughter of worlds, consumes planets for sustenance. He's always eaten planets. And Fantastic Four, the first people uh, in continuity, we find out later that other people have stopped him. But Fantastic Four are able to stop him from eating Earth. But Silver Surfer is amongst that planet, and he makes a deal with Galactus that, hey, I will go out and find you planets to eat if you don't eat mine. I will become your herald. So he sacrifices his own life to also end others. And that's what's tricky about the character is he tries to find uninhabited planets, but every so often Galactus is too hungry and he has to do the unthinkable. So it's a really beautiful character with conflict and like greater good and all those things, but it's a sacrifice because he's trapped in space for all time to save his wife. So mm. they could they could totally do that with Chalabal um, and make it her sacrifice for him. Or But we don't know what the story's going to be. So it's funny, like also if they really wanted it, they could have used, they could still. We don't know what the story is and the, and the reporting that people have been doing is is frankly 
infantile. Like, it's it's so silly how people have written a movie in their heads that hasn't filmed yet. We need the clicks. Clicks! Dwayne Johnson specifically said he's not going to endorse Biden. He's not, because he needs That's the clicks. That's what it said. That's he's what like, he I don't said, believe right? in... Yeah. And he had a whole thing about, like, the, like splitting people. That's not what he said, Joe. No, he didn't. He had actually more thoughtful. Yeah, but the clicks! The, the clicks! Anyway. Bruce Campbell told me that once. He says he doesn't talk about politics because it's uh, automatically alienating half of his audience. And then the rock statement, I was like, but then you're not standing for anything. Especially after you stood for something. But yeah, uh, like if you, yeah. If you, it's kind of regressing. No, if you go, like, like, I believe. Yeah. He's like, I have too big of a platform to stand for something. But I no, that's man. what you... I mean, you already opened that door, man. Yeah. Mayank Ranavari. Hey, Greg and Coy. So great to see you. Given Dev Patel's great performance in Monkey Man. Oh, this is a really great question. This is a really great question. I like this. What MCU and or DCU character would he be best suited for? Oh, my God. Um, I think, personally, he would be a fantastic, you know, um, Coy, what do you got? <laughs> I, was, I thought you might actually have one. <laughs> uh, Dev, Dev Patel has been my uh, Reed Richards for seven or eight years. So well, Pedro Pascal happen. being cast was a bummer for me because I really like Dev Patel um, there. But if he's not going to play him, I hadn't really had an alt, and so many people are already cast. Um, the DCU was forming, so I'm going to go over there. Should be Ra's oh, al Ghul. He'd be a <laughs> he'd be a good Mister Miracle. He's got like a, a really sensitive uh, snark to him, where he's like you can like feel for him, and you can see like depression being something that he's going through, but also you don't feel like it's something that is immature. Like sometimes uh, depression is played for like laughs or for like making a character seem weak. And I think with Mr. Miracle, it's a strength of him overcoming it and trying to persevere through suicide. And I think Deb Patel has that darkness and sensitivity, but intelligence in him that he could portray someone like Mr. Miracle that has to overcome a darkness. I don't know. I kind of think he would be a great morph. (laughs) (laughs) I'd take it, man. I think he'd be a wonderful morph. He's fun. He's funny. I could see him as morph. Or forge. I can see him. I mean, he's smart. I want a hyper intelligent character from him, which is why I always thought Reed. Dev Patel's Living Tribunal is great. I mean, I haven't seen Monkey Man. He's badass. He's in it. so badass. Dude. Okay. He's like immediately an, a top action star and a top action director in one movie. The It's like, imagine if Keanu Reeves directed John Wick. This thing is insane. I just kept going to like the Bat verse and I was going, eh, no, that's boring. Or like a oh, John, Nightwing. John Constantine is not a oh, bad pick. Oh, that's fun. And he's British. That wouldn't be a bad and pick he's British. at all, man. Ooh, Nightcrawler's a great pick too. Nightcrawler's a great pick, but I don't want to so like handsome. douse him in makeup. True. But I kind I, of feel like they do that with a lot of characters, of actors of color. <laughs> they often like give yeah. them the heavy makeup role. I'm always like, yeah, and, uh, when everybody was like casting people of color in the Fantastic Four, and it was always just thing. I was like, so black guys, the thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, so you yeah. want to have a lot of white yeah, people and yeah. like put one guy in makeup? Yeah. Uh, Dev Patel is a great Nightcrawler because he's supposed to be like a handsome, fuzzy. He would be a great. <laughs> that's the ironic part. Is he would? He would be an excellent and the Nightcrawler. Hair, his yeah. hair is so <laughs> Nightcrawlery. But do it, make it happen. Nightcrawler, because my Nightcrawler's been um Timothy Chalamet. Because he's got, like, that really pointy face and the hair, and he's got, like, that charm. But you don't want to put that beautiful white skin and makeup. I want to blue that beautiful face. <laughs> you heard me, YouTube censors. <laughs> but I think, uh... I'm moving on. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even mean it at first, and then the words came out of my mouth, and I was like, too late! Uh, but I think that uh, I think that Nightcrawler would be good. I think Constantine would be a little bit better, because I'd love to see that. But I also think, um, uh, who, was, who was my first one? Um... Fantastic Four. That's what you personally said. I think oh, yeah, Reed. Yeah. yeah, 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 but that's not going to happen. You said Morph. Then you said Morph. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, I, I said someone's action. John Wick, uh, I had an Coin action are not pick. bringing out the memory. Guys, we're doing great. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. I'll remember. <laughs> the memory in us not coming it's out. It's going, going well. That was great, guys. You guys really helped us out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Chat really came in handy there. Solid pick. Oh, well, yeah, we told you so. that. <laughs> um, our <laughs> pick is yeah. Nightcrawler. Our pick is everything you guys are saying. <laughs> Olivia Hamlin. Coy, you want to read that, my friend? Uh, good afternoon. Love Julia Garner in Ozark. I think a lot of people will turn around when they see her performance. Love you guys. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you very, very much. I think no matter what, she's going to be a powerhouse, man. She's so talented. 
Uh, I'm I'm just excited for more people to discover her. I think at this point the Marvel universe is very good at getting people going from uh you know small roles or even something as big as Ozark to household names. Like I don't know if she's a household name yet because I don't think everyone watched Ozark and I think Marvel will get her there. So I'm excited for her career because of Marvel. You know though I I find often that so much of the time when we when they do get an actor who's like oh man I love them in this TV show. And then they put them in the movies. It never quite. I feel like they never quite utilize like. Yeah. And maybe it's different the, uh, mediums, man. Long different form, mediums. Short form. Yeah, you get more time with them, so it makes sense. Uh, but like part of me is going, oh, I should check out Ozark, and then I go, is, is, it, re- is it really going to like deliver? <laughs> you know? Ozark right. is exceptional, it, but there's so many shows. I mean, in terms of translating the powerhouse of whatever they uh, say about Julia Garner yeah. into live action as Silver Surfer. I just I don't want to do that to myself. I'd rather just take it on its own. Just giving myself an excuse to to not watch another fi- show. Finish Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, there first. it is. I'm enjoying this season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I honestly think uh, her career is going to benefit from it, and uh, I'm excited to see what she does with it. Absolutely, Casel Grace Skull. Thank you for first time being in the live chat. That's what I'm talking about. Mayank Ranavari. Is the recent win by Bob Iger over Nelson Peltz going to affect Disney and particularly Marvel in a significant way going forward? Coy, I don't know what they're talking about. Nelson Peltz is a dude who uh, this is going to cause I'm the, the dude playing the dude. dude actually, this guy's just another Ironically, dude. that quote's kind of what he's talking about. Uh, he came out and said, like, do we really need a movie like Black Panther where it's all black leads? And does Miss Marvel really have to all have all female leads? And he was trying to take a controlling seat in the board at Disney. And he said that uh, Kevin Feige wasn't not doing his job, but it li- should at least be looked at how he's doing his job. Like, he said a bunch of stuff that was like, we don't need black leads and females and Kevin Feige. What are you doing? So everyone that likes to yell woke was like, this guy, hire this guy. We want more whites. Um, so uh, I think it's probably overall in the great scheme of cinema. Good to not have a bigot in a position of power. Um, I don't respectfully kn- disagree. I don't know the man. <laughs> uh, I just have only read a couple quotes uh, and the couple quotes I read. I was like, OK. It's not like there aren't white people in in roles, and it's not like there aren't men in roles. Like, Black Panther is a very specific unifying film for people that don't get to see themselves on screen, and and unfortunately, that's still going to be a commentary. And and the Marvels, I, I don't love that I didn't like it, because it it's I want better for women, and it sucks to have him have ammunition because of that movie not doing well that allows bigots to have some traction. So... Uh, I think it's a net positive that he is not in a position of power when he's saying, like, we don't need all these representations. Uh, but I do think the people that are yelling, like, the DEI thing I learned on this show. What is uh, that? What is DEI? Diversity, equality, and inclusion, I think it is. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's like the buzzword of the day of, like, w- w- casting people that aren't white is a bad thing because they're only getting cast because they're not white. It's like a, it's like the, the rhetoric of like white people. The thing that I'm struggling with is like, I think it's the pie metaphor of, of I think whites are used to getting 80% of the pie and now they're getting 50% of the pie. And instead of looking at the 50% they're getting, they're going like, we lost 30%. It feels like loss. Yeah. And so people aren't, it's so fresh and so new. There hasn't been enough time. Like I struggled um, a little while ago with, uh, you know, I kept losing work. Because it didn't make sense to put me in certain positions on camera because there have been so many white people on camera and I kept actively losing work and it was hard. But I kept thinking like, yeah, but this is more important that someone else feels seen because I don't feel unseen. And it, and But I had to zoom out. I had to get out of my own shit and go like, hey, you're personally not making money and you're personally struggling. But as the world spins, this is helping hundreds of thousands of people so your shit doesn't matter and i don't think the average person that's been in a position of comfort or uh privilege has ever zoomed out enough to go what are those hundreds of thousands of people thinking but why is it not about me so i think dei and and the white shit um is just people not zooming out of their lives enough not traveling enough not talking to communities enough not having conversations with people that don't look like them enough and yeah, you're gonna feel that 30% of the pie go away, and yeah, you're gonna notice less jobs, but if you look at how everyone else has lived for a long time, you'll realize that you're just complaining about things that weren't entitled to you to begin with, mm. and that shouldn't have been the way, so go fuck yourself. Interesting. So, 
as a white man, you found a way to help elevate other people who are not white by stepping out of the way. So you could say you saved. <laughs> you helped. You were. <laughs> Was I some sort of uh, savior? savior? Yeah. Uh, as the French say, the savior. I've, I've, I feel uh, like that's something. You no, know, no. This is this is about me. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Rick. Yeah. What I'm doing this is I'm is waiting five I years step to write my memoir. <laughs> yeah. And I say how, how I, I helped how I everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Dot dot dot. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll I'll, I'll make sure there's a, a you know a GoFundMe as mm-hmm. well. Because at that point, no, I just I think it's um I, I think it's really important to have people in positions of power that don't think about themselves first. And I think that last year was maybe the hardest year um, for people in the middle class to feel comfortable. And as it is, millennials are not buying houses and shit. So it's really hard when you're feeling the weight of the world to not lash out. And I think it's really hard for people that grew up thinking they were going to live comfortably after a certain point, then seeing jobs go away. On top of that, there's a lot of pressure and pressure causes anger, but also can cause diamonds. But I think at the end of the day, uh, everyone getting mad at people that are not in positions of power is the worst move. Like, there was 141 new billionaires minted last year. New ones. Um, while everyone else is suffering. Forbes put out their list last week, and there's 141 new billionaires with a B. Billionaires shouldn't exist at all. That means their great-grandkids don't have to work. Hey, and there are whoa. people now that can't buy a house. So Wait, we might... Uh, I mean, I'm working on it, Craig. Right get, around I'm the trying corner. trying to get there. I'm trying to be a 100,000 heir. I, I mean... <laughs> Until I'm a billionaire, I'm dead on the inside. (laughs) (laughs) Until then, (laughs) what have I done with my life? Until my account says B and I have servants. Uh, Hi, Mom. Your mom's in the chat. Coy, we must move on, as as important as it is. Yeah, as as white savior John Wick, I say we move on. White savior John Wick. As the decider of things, as the white man, let's move along. Normac. Normac is saying, first of all, great to see you both on yet another live stream. Loving the channel and content and community. Thank you. We are loving all of those in that exact order, too. My question is, do you think Toby Spider-Man will appear in Deadpool 3, also Wolverine versus Batman? How caught up are you on Invincible Season 2? I'm at the, I'm at the gap. All right, I'll keep you shut. Um, <laughs> all right, so. I haven't watched the new season. Like the, it's the good. Yeah. It's really good. I'm excited. Um, uh, do I think Toby Spider-Man will appear in Deadpool 3? No. I don't think he'll appear in that one. I I think this one is going to keep it more Fox. Ba- it wasn't Fox, right? It was always Sony. Sony Spider Man. <laughs> right, yeah. Deadpool was, Fox. Sony yeah, Spider Man. I, I think they're going to keep this one more Fox based, and I think having Toby Spider Man in there, in some ways, will just take away further from all the things they would probably want to shine a light on a little bit more. And kind of undermine Secret Wars. I do think that he will ultimately appear in Secret Wars, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Toby Maguire. And I do find it funny. It's it is really strange how the conversation around Toby Spider Man four is becoming remarkably prevalent right now. Yeah. Sam Raimi's talking about it. Apparently Toby Maguire was asked about it. I, I thought it was just something that was like a little it, weird it, rumor. It, it is it is just still a, a rumor. Yeah. Sam Raimi's like, no one's been talking about it. Nobody called me. Yeah. But I'm like, damn, but they're t- but they're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never thought and, we'd get and, it, but and, I think it's more likely now than ever. And they're still yeah, I think they're like gate I think now more than ever there is there's this amount of put something out there on social media, gauge interest via that way. Yeah. I think now studios are doing that more than before of what's the response? All right, All right do, we, do we lean into it? All right. <laughs> yeah. The audience wants to give yeah. us money? Yeah, because um, the studios do pay attention to all these things. I think the the more uh, we've been involved in this line of work and the more you talk to publicists or PR teams on any front, any marketing team, you do discover, like, oh, they all really pay attention to to the negatives and the positives. They, do, they, they pay attention to all camps of the Internet and the social media. Third rhetoric. shameless and name it, drop of the day. Every time, like when I, when the Kevin Feige conversation, I love how much he listens. Like every time I've talked to Kevin yeah. Feige, he's actively been like, "What did you think of Blank?" As the fan side, what do you think of Blank? As yeah. someone informed by the comics, what? And then when we we talked to him at at Spider Man, he wanted to know what we were thinking of the current stuff, and and was receiving that. Like he wants that data to make decisions. He's yeah. not a suit that's like, "Oh, this doesn't matter." And I think that him being in that position of power is really important to have that reception. Like I don't think the tone that we generally strike is that of a critical drinker perhaps right and i, I remember a while ago there uh, there was this thing that came out that was saying 
I forget where it was from, but oh, it, you know, uh, this thing failed because of critical drinkers' opinion. I'm like, I wouldn't say that. I think what happens is does he have enough impact? Who who is this person? Is it a YouTube person? YouTube person. He's kind of like in that camp of like. Nerd <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. It. But uh, I lo I think he's actually he could be. There are some videos saying that he could be very well. Uh, he could be very well spoken. Okay. And he's a writer too and stuff like cool. that. So he's not just like some dude yelling. Right. Right. Um, right. At the end of the day, though, he does the audience that he primarily attracts is the side, the voice that he primarily is. Like I can, I can be here and tell you guys, like, yeah, I think like Critical Drinker and Nerdrotic, they have videos where I'm like, this is really well edited, it's really well constructed, really well put together. The community they primarily attract, though, at the end of the day, is one that falls into the we gotta like be pissed off and rage and stuff and even if they're being positive about something there's usually some sort of slant yeah that they have to, to do have to appeal negative, yeah, exactly yeah and and uh that is what this when, when that, that report came out i forget where it was from but what studios i have noticed look at is when they're looking at the influencers that's how they're gauging community so they can might come to us or, or look at uh, like the camp like us or like three C films or heavy spoilers like more in our our line of our rhetoric our community and go like how are they responding based off of them because the what default are they of anger isn't something yeah. you want to have is like how do we how do we judge that if you're always mad because you can't say that like critical drinker is the one who has informed everyone of how to feel he is the voice of, of those people, people that yeah. are already feeling yeah that way. exactly and so that's that is how they like use influencers to gauge. Yeah, um, because they can't read every comment, they can't read every tweet, so, so they have vibe. they have to like see who where's where's uh, the voice gravitational pull coming from. You know what I mean? Because I think even so, the yeah. most positive people had negative things to say about Multiverse Thor and the Marvels, and I think that shows like even the positive pundits yeah. were like, Ooh. yeah, because like we can be negative about something sometimes too, obviously, because we're, we're, we're just, at the end of the day we got to be honest. Um, but you know, I, I'm glad that even in this chat. Overall, Believe me, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be easier clicks for sure. Oh my god, <laughs> the money views. I, I could just make. imagine the Man. money we could put. Dude, if, if I <laughs> we just fed the easy emotion to feed, which is the the emotion human beings are so prone Dude, to I'm subconsciously. A white guy. Which is the money I can make as negative. a white guy yelling, yeah. like if and like Fox it's e News, it's easy. For the Fox reason, News crowd yeah. has such inarticulate fucks working for them. It'd be so yeah. easy to be like, I'm a well-spoken white. The money yeah. I could make off hate, and so it's so embarrassing when it's just that easy to fall into. Yeah. Work you for do? your money, people. What are you going to do? Jeff Carroll. For Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had an awful experience with Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters. But I hope you and Tara give the show a chance and can enjoy it. It's flawed, but light years better than the movies. All love. Uh, they did announce season two. So, of course, uh, I think closer to season two, leading up to it, when that is a little bit more in the zeitgeist again and irrelevant, we will then uh, pick it back up. And uh, I want to. That way, by the time we're done with the season one finale, we go. That's what we did with Jack, cool. not Jack Reacher. We did it with some show, Witcher. I forget which one. But it panned out well. It's a good thing. Got to be in the middle ground because right now, we're just going to get lost in the echo chamber of other things that are more prevalent and, and require our time right now. X Men. X Men. Got Fallout coming out. Can't talk about that yet. You got Fallout coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Jeff. Uh, appreciate your interest. And thank you to all who have been showing Tara a lot of love with her return. Thank you to all who have been supporting all the rejects who are here. It's not just Coy, John, and myself. There are many a rejects. Squad, 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 squad. Danny, my God, you goddamn right. He's, you remember my Joker shoes? They're dope. He made those. Oh, they're great, Sucker, man. Sucker, I hope your Joker shoes Wally are still rocking. work. They are. They're amazing. I wear them oftentimes whenever I want to, you know, get some attention. Yeah. <laughs> so Notice my you. feet. Thank you, man. They're, they're awesome. I, I hope, hope your business is going well. Jeff Carroll, back at it for Coy. Let me ask you, you talk. Okay. Good. I can take a breather. Yeah. My God. yeah. If I have to speak more than 30 I consecutive know. seconds, I am I am Cardio, Greg, cardio. For Coy, do you think we should we see Norn Rad in flashbacks or simultaneously with Shalabal or just Shalabal? What will the Shalabal story be, do you think? Don't let the internet get you down. Hashtag Coy Ponder bust. First of all, thank you. Uh, I um, personally think it's going to be a multiversal thing where Shalabal is with Norrin Rad in the universe we meet the Fantastic Four, and she becomes the Silver Surfer, if the Silver Surfer rumor element is true, and that's how they realize they're not in their universe anymore because Norrin Rad is our Silver Surfer in the universe we're used to in the MCU. But I think no matter what, Shalabal is going to represent a powerful um, Herald of Galactus, whether it's going to be... a 
different Shala balls or just one. Uh, I think they're going to do the Norrin Rad story. I do think it's, I honestly do think it's Lakeith. Uh, I think he accidentally messed up, and I don't know if that's going to lose him the job, but it's mm. very funny. Did you hear about that? Lakeith Stanfield, um, on, on the, uh, there was one of the posts announcing that Julia Garter, he uh, on Instagram was like, Oh, he said, I thought, like, I like, oh, I thought that him, was yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. No, no, he said, I thought that was me. I think he got told he was cast and then thought he oh. lost the job. So I think he accidentally outed himself as Silver Surfer Norton Rad. Uh. I think Lakeith Stanfield is Norton Rad. Oh. oh, that's cool. I totally misread that. Yeah, I think he was like, Oh, I thought this was me. Not, I went out for, you know what I mean? I think he's Norton Rad. And oh, I think that's shit. rad. I'm very excited about it. So I uh, I think we're going to have them as a couple. I think that if my multiversal thing, that's how it's going to go. If it's just one universe, I think it's just going to be her as a herald. I think no matter what, it's going to be a beautiful little love story between the two of them. Uh, and I uh, and the internet get you down. Nah, man. I, I've been able to separate from the internet in a very different way. The last like three weeks, that's been a big part of my focus. Uh, Greg and I had a big talk about three weeks ago about like why we love doing this. And I'm really focusing on the reason behind this as opposed to just doing it. And so like, I pretty Which much is make more money. Profit. That's what it came down to. <laughs> That's what it takes. How uh, do we become one percenters? I want a billion dollars <laughs> off other people's art. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think it's important to be um, present on the internet in our jobs, but I think I was making the internet, my life, not my life on the internet. It was very unhealthy. So like Twitter, I've got just set to the, people i'm following i don't even go to the the for you section and i um i will often post something that i strongly believe and then i'll mute it and i'll go let's see how this goes and then i'll fortify and then for like half an hour i'll just scroll through and find new people to block uh, so like recently with the silver surfer thing if julia garner happens to be silver surfer and is a female and that's our silver surfer i have no problem with that i shared that thought but i knew it would kick the beehive of people that didn't share that thought and it's just an efficient way to get rid of those people from my life kick so that's the how beehive that's the name of my coming of age adolescent story that is now available at uh every library is it star gerald jerry o'connell is that the one where he died with the bees or no macaulay culkin which one of those? I don't know, but you're, you're ruining something. Sorry, me. sorry, something. You're, you're definitely. I'm definitely spoiling, spoiling something. The end of a movie that I can't remember well. <laughs> I keep turning when it's all right here. Um, <laughs> dead, dead shot. Right. Yeah. Dead shot. What's up? Back in the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, Face they, beauty, they, they, they did they, react to Saltburn. Thank it's, you it is hilarious. to everyone who has been contributing in the super chats. I got to check the stream labs. Please remind me to check the stream lives, everyone. <laughs> Seems like Fantastic Four World, the 60s, is very futuristic. Probably retro sci-fi. Yeah, I love that world. Honestly, wish it was normal 60s. Yeah, racism and all. Yeah. And then when they are sent to the MCU <laughs> to read, feeling like he's not the smartest person in the world. Sometimes we like idealize like the fifties and sixties. Oh, like, we so like, do. You know, there's some like terrible things that were going to affect that. Dude, it's so <laughs> funny that people are idolizing the uh, pandemic lockdown yeah. now. Like, this Mexican like, guy shouldn't have a white yeah, wife. Yeah, <laughs> what is like, going if on? If they were back in the sixties, they'd be like saying a lot of <laughs> nasty stuff to Pedro Pascal. Uh, yeah. Like his name is Pedro Pascal. Uh, I I think it's hilarious we're idolizing uh, 2020 on TikTok and stuff because it's like, guys, we were all miserable and dying. And it's so funny how people are like, the bygone era of four years ago sure was great. And we look at the 50s and 60s like with these like these hats. And it's so funny that if the 60s was what we did, like actually as a historic thing, that movie wouldn't be as fun and free-spirited as the, the Fantastic Four needs to be. I think making it retro-futuristic is very smart. I think making it an idyllic world like we perceive the 60s is better. If you read a Fantastic Four comic, it's very... Um, you know, beautiful, bright sunshine. There's obviously monsters and stuff, but the 60s comics were very, like, Mary Jane spoke like a, a crazy person. Like, there's a lot of the lingo and the, and the craziness of the time that is idealizing it. I think it's smart to do retrofuturism personally, and I think it's going to make for a really lush world. I'm excited. Absolutely. I think it's going to be... I, th I think that's a great way to entice to put it in the 60s, and it helps separate, too. Yeah. When you're like... Where I mean, it, makes, it makes it less... You know, confusing the timeline and stuff, and multiversal shenanigans and whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cool. At one point, I had a goofy idea for a Punisher team-up movie with all the previous actors. However, I do really want to see Kill Crew, the post-war of the realms tie-in, get adapted to the MCU. Oh, Ray Stevenson was, that was uh, yeah. a Punisher. That's right. It was Dolph Lundgren, Ray Stevenson. Tom Jane. Tom Jane and John Byrne. There's a lot of Punishers. Yeah, and great. They're all just very different, which is cool. 
that's a good multiversal yeah. look at because they're all so different with the same archetypal character. Yeah. Um, I would love to see a Kill Crew. Uh, War of the Realms is a really cool event title in the X-Men. Um, I highly recommend, uh, not in the X-Men, sorry, in the MCU. Uh, highly recommend you check it out. It's it's Thor-centric, but all of the characters really get some fun. There's a really fun Spider-Man subplot that I love uh, happening over there. Tom Taylor, I, I believe, was writing um, over there. But uh, yeah, War of the Realms is great. Kill Crew is really fun. I don't know if we'll ever get that Norse, uh, especially with it looks like they're going to be kind of leaving the Thor stuff after Thor 4, but um, I love that you read that, and everyone check out War of the Realms. Yeah, that's great. Thanks to Sifs. Appreciate the super chat, my friend. Jeff Carroll, this is for both of us. Koi responded on Insta, but I'm so happy for the Teen Titans movie. Animated show comics starting with Jeff Johns 2003. HBO show, they've always been in my life, and they're the team I love most. I thought the Teen Titans movie, you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. That is not confirmed. So It's heavily speculated. Everyone reported on we it like it was done. We don't need more DCU announcements. I, that's what I'm like. I, I don't we think don't James Gunn more. has made a statement on it. And the only thing I've seen him do to acknowledge it was I think someone said, hey, can you confirm that the Teen Titans is a rumor and he liked it? And I think that's as close to we've had him acknowledging it. So I don't think until the person running DCU said – is good and real, then I don't believe it. So, um, yeah, I, I personally think we wait and see. Uh, I hope it's true, but I definitely have a little bit more like, oh, no, he hasn't mentioned it. It's been like two weeks, and he's been active on socials. I know he's filming, but he's still James Gunn, so he's multitasking. I would love a Teen Titans movie, but I also want to make sure the things they have announced come out and get settled first. I think it. I think kind of knowing too much in advance when you're trying to build a – his, his personal page is Koi Jandro. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my name. If you yeah. type my name in on yeah. YouTube, my page is uh, – and I'm building it up. Very excited. So uh, the – what were we saying? Teen Titans. Yeah, whatever, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the announced properties, whether or not this is confirmed. I, I think sometimes, especially when you're building a new universe, you don't want to – I feel like as an audience, you, you kind of don't want to know too much in advance of what's even going to be coming out. I wish we knew less about Marvel. Because you don't want to start putting it together or trying to put it together, and then you're setting like expectations for yourself, and, and oftentimes high expectations leads to disappointments, and a lot of times that is something that we have thrusted onto ourselves yeah. <laughs> that they haven't even done. And so I, th I feel like that's why James Gunn's pretty intent on it. Like, honestly... I get like announcing all that shit up fr up front was was the move that he had to they probably felt he had to do to show like we got an actual plan here but we don't need more announcements it, it's a little much and we need some surprises and he's just trying to make one movie right now and I can't uh, imagine the headache it is to like I'm making Superman but but I'm going on but Twitter God to make sure damn it, these rumors man. get squashed what people are saying online is pissing me off uh the, someone said has James Gunn hired anyone but himself uh yeah uh James Mangold for Swamp Thing uh Andy Muschietti for Batman and recently uh Craig Gillespie for Supergirl so he's hiring many people to oh, make many um, movies uh and Mel Gibson for the Batgirl movie yeah um you know he's directing the Thing solo film. <laughs> Uh, Mel Gibson make a great, incredible. He <laughs> 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 would be a good old man. He would be a good Hulk. <laughs> the uh, also my channel stuff. I'm doing like really comic centric stuff. So if you guys like when when I go on my comic book rants here, that's kind of what I'm doing as a foundation over there. I'm gonna do like you're not here to plug your channel. <laughs> <laughs> Just start yelling at your mic. Uh, but I, I want to do more comic stuff, and I'll be doing movie stuff. But I know I do movies a lot here, and I know I do movies a lot at like break room. But I really want like people to read comics. So uh, my page is gonna have comic stuff. Probably. Three days of comic stuff, two days of movie stuff once I'm ramped up. But right now I'm focusing on just one video of comic stuff uh, a week. So please check out my page at Koi Genre. Well, Plugged. I'll tell you guys, um, we have found a, uh, a slightly tweaked direction for Koi's Comic Corner. Oh. And uh, we've shot two so far. One, we've, uh, we want to get a, f a couple edited, like a few edits that way we can. Com confidently release them weekly. Yeah, we uh, want to actually have it be a weekly it, thing. Again. But this latest one is easily the best one. Oh, it makes me easily. so happy. It might not it's be amazing. the one with the most SEO or the one that'll get the most clicks, but it wasn't about that. It was about reestablishing the foundation. Koi did excellent. The editors, wow. Like, ev <laughs> everyone uh, all around, fantastic work. And uh, I can't wait for, for people to see it. And now it all comes down to a freaking dumb email. 
<laughs> oh, everyone's it's, favorite part it's hardest, commodifying a whole video of nuance of into an YouTube image is, is like this is what really matters this one thing he's so Char- articulate in this video i'll never click yeah. on uh charlie 836 my man what tonal change do you think could bring back to the mcu hype also looking great guys <laughs> you're always looking great in your sexy thumbnail charlie it's flexing what tonal change did you see he said earlier in the chat that uh, he thinks you're in better shape than i am now and i agree i think greg's actually surpassed Some, me someone's committed that to memory uh, someone, someone got affected no no <laughs> someone is going to use that at the gym later <laughs> someone today. Was like, it's not they just <laughs> it's not a negative <laughs> it's an acknowledgement of i uh, stepped my game up which i like that greg works out because i don't have a lot of workout friends and i'm around people that don't mind i was definitely still Buffer for sure. I'm just trying to get my body fat to Greg level while being buff. Look at that vascularity, yeah, man. That's crazy. The tricep definition is awesome. Well, so yeah, I, Greg's I killing. I haven't been doing cardio as much. So you're actually getting some like definition from the muscles having well, like, calories guys, to grow. Well, guys, the key is you gotta have the most boring diet in the world. <laughs> That's <laughs> really how you look. I good. have not been able to apply what everyone has said about like there's ways to do it where you can still enjoy your food and nope. have a lot of fun. No, nope. I'm like nope, nope. Got to sacrifice. <laughs> oh, to look like this on sa- camera. You got to sacrifice, so you're not bloated all the time on camera. And I've been eating that. food that I enjoy, so I look a little softer. But Greg working out gives me because yeah. I'm around a lot of yeah. soft boys, so I got to get back. Oh, finally seducing your mom. It's working. Uh, oh, the yep. tonal change Greg's that I think they should bring back to the MCU hype. Dad, uh, I feel like oh. this is going to be a bit of a controversial opinion. Oh, I think. The best voice for the MCU has been James Gunn because he knows how to strike the balance perfectly, in my opinion, between what MCU tries to do that often they fail at Mm. with (laughs) – not often, I would say. Sometimes I'm talking about impact more so than anything else. I'm talking more so impact. Sometimes, oh, there's too much comedy. Sometimes people say about James Gunn. I don't agree. This is too much comedy, but I think James Gunn knows how to be the perfect amalgamation of action. He tends to bring in amazing action. Mm -hmm. The Suicide Squad, to me, is my favorite of his comic book movies, more than the other ones. Um, Action, comedy, great characters, introduction of characters he excels at. He knows how to do it all. And so, to me, I think... It's weird when you go online and, and everyone just seems like James Gunn just looks like the enemy. And I'm going, I feel like James Gunn is actually a massive threat to the MCU (laughs) because he knows how to do all the things well that oftentimes when we criticize MCU, I'm like, you know who doesn't really make those mistakes? James Gunn. (laughs) You know who often gets like great audience score and great critic score and is commended for that? James Gunn. You know who often makes money when nobody else is? James Gunn. (laughs) So I personally feel like um, studying James Gunn is a great, because he knows how to be really serious too yeah and no, make that impactful get sacrificed yeah. from the comedy he knows how to bring that emotional depth and like i i love the suicide squad i really i think that movie is and i, I i've sat it like kind of vanished from the conversation mm-hmm. but it is i do think that is actually my favorite dc you movie a dc whatever the last 10 years movie yeah, yeah i i personally think that's my favorite one um and I like it more than the Guardians movie. Uh, Desmond just said James Gunn gave us volume one when the MCU needed comedy and gave us volume three when it needed seriousness. Exactly. Knowing and that's what how he reads. To, he reads the room. Knowing how to feel with your audience as opposed to trying. It, like So much of what we've been talking about here with, with all the other rejects and like even when doing Comic Corner is like, <laughs> like all right, cool, we're going to do this again. I want you to come less from here. And more from here. And that's why, I mean, yeah. I haven't <laughs> seen the new one, but you said yeah. it's the best because, like, we we stopped yeah. what we had been doing yeah. and we made it about, like, why I love talking about this yeah. stuff. And yeah. I think that's what James Gunn does. Yeah. And so I do think um, I, it doesn't really quite answer the question. I'm saying sometimes you got to study what other people are doing and then how can you kind of learn from that and make it your own. And having James Gunn, ha- studying what James Gunn does, I really do think is something that could be laced throughout everyone here and in brief my answer would be uh more street level stuff i think that winter soldier was street level even with the helicarrier crashing at the end it still felt like something that could happen around us i think spider-man needs to go street level i think daredevil needs. i think there's enough street level heroes that the big stuff will feel big again if the small stuff is allowed to be small if everything's an avengers level event nothing's an avengers level event and i really think that keeping things contained as well as large will make the universe feel interesting again right now it 
it is a similar color palette. It is a similar tone, and none of it's feeling unique because it's all one big, 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 bigging each other. It's one of the reasons I loved Eternal so much, which I know isn't uh, everyone's cup of tea, but it was my cup of tea because it was a crazy huge story, but the movie felt intimate and the relationships were intimate and the movie felt like I was invested in the people even while things were huge. It was like both street level and Avengers somehow to me. But I, I honestly yeah. think we need to look at the comics and look at what comics are doing well. We need to work on making the Easter eggs not the focus. I think the internet also kind of messed up Marvel because they do listen to fans. They do listen to what people want. And I think there's a lot of people that are just looking for a video where they can do a yellow circle around a thing and they can point at it and they can talk into a camera. And that's not movies. So the movie needs to come first. It's the difference between Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Iron Man 1 had Captain America's shield in the background. Iron Man 2 used Captain America's shield to literally hoist up a device in the foreground. That went from being an Easter egg to like notice me and I feel like a lot of the MCU has become we want you to love us and I don't think that always is a bad thing but I do think that fan entitlement is a problem versus fan appreciation and so I want them to listen but I don't want them to be run by committee because we can't make movies and we shouldn't pretend we can yeah they need a balance they need a balance like Fano said you gotta wipe out half of the face five <laughs> slated up. That's it. Naked. Snap it away. <laughs> uh, appreciate the conversation. You guys are keeping in the chat. It's really awesome to see. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, and appreciate all the super chats. Again, thank you. This is awesome to see. Everybody's Nick Alexander. Happy. It's been a long time since I've done a live stream. Are there any other shows? Hey, thank you, Nick Alexander. Are there any other shows or movies from Marvel that were not part of the MCU that you want brought over? What character would you, would you play in the DCU? Any other shows or movies from Marvel that were not part of the MCU that you want brought over? I feel like Blade deserves it. Um, Wesley Snipes' Blade. I do. Uh, out of the Marvel ones? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's not many other choices that haven't been brought over <laughs> I mean, like x X-Men has been brought over yeah. x-men's about yeah. to happen yeah. in a big way yeah um but i ghost do... rider i'd love to see a nick cage cameo I mean, yeah absolutely just yeah. why not who would it man right he's the best part uh i i've said for about 10 years now i can't wait to see chris evans show up and people be like oh it's cap and then he flame on um i think that's coming i think um I, uh, part, not part of the mcu yeah i think everyone will have by like the next five years i think secret wars is going to be everyone else yeah, I think it, I think everyone's coming to the MCU. Yeah, uh, and who would I play in the in the DCU? Um, ooh, I mean, I'd I'd love playing Booster Gold. I'd have a lot of fun with Booster Gold, especially with my like I I've be I've become like less apathetic towards uh, TikTok and more ag ag aggressively anti TikTok. I think um I think the internet is really important for communication, and I think that I'm against in a big way this congressional stuff against TikTok. I think it's really dangerous to get rid of freedom of speech, but I do think the TikTok... Agree um, or disagree? I respect that. But I think the TikTok, <laughs> um, what it's done to our attention spans and what it's done to our media literacy and what it's done for our ability to spread not truth and truth. Like, yes, there's a lot of, of things that we're learning about horrors that we wouldn't get otherwise, but there's also a lot of things that are made up and people believe it because someone's saying it at them. So it's really tricky when we need it for news and things that has been claimed. Everything's going away. Cool. <laughs> we also need uh, to have some sense of, like, the, the TikTokification has caused us to um, – not have really like talent doesn't rise up in the same way with just specifically movie stuff. Yeah. So I, I think TikTok is very important for the world, but very dangerous for art. Well, we got way more super chats to go through, but I don't want to forget about uh, those who contribute to our stream labs. So we're just going to uh, hop into our stream labs really quick. I loved Adam Eve. You can catch my reaction with Aaron, by the way. Here, thank you oh, guys. I didn't. Keep I didn't put going. a bow on that. The reason, but Booster Gold would be good because I would, I would use that as like oh. Booster Gold oh, to be yeah. a TikToker. The like question basically, was, the who I, would you play? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I think that Booster Gold being from like now and going to the '80s would be fun. So he's like just an influencer trying to get clicks. So he's like doing super yeah. heroic stuff, but for attention. Uh, so I think that TikTok would be a way to basically like have people understand the concept of the character by making him an influencer. Oh my God! You know, I would love to play. Um, um, Solomon Grundy, because <laughs> I feel like I could actually get my lines down, you know. And I know it would piss off John. It would be because that's John's favorite character. He would be and asking for seven anything like, just to uh, rub it in John's <laughs> face. Just to turn that yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey man, play Solomon Grundy. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. 
All right, let's go through this. Ronan Unchained, who was at our WonderCon panel. You know, there were some people who showed up to our WonderCon panel who only came to WonderCon just to see our panel. People flew in or drove I remember in? some of your names. Trey, um, Benjamin. Uh, Shouts out to Jen for always being an amazing mm -hmm. hero to us. Uh, the Gamer MJ. Honestly, is that my Will Smith? Did I just find a Will Smith impression? Oh, maybe it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been real time. <laughs> No, but now if I try, I'm going to fail. Oh, no, we missed the Gamer MJ. First stream labs below Ronan. Oh, no, just marking that. Did so. we? He's right. You're right. Sorry, Ronan. Don't just step caught in it. here and I be caught a it. jerk. The Gamer MJ, thank you. Thank you, Gamer MJ. Honestly, <laughs> I guess it's my Will Smith. <laughs> he has decided. I don't know what else he sounds like. I really don't care for all the controversy over the casting of Silver Surfer. I'm mainly just excited for the film itself because it released on my birthday this year. Don't worry. It's going to get delayed. Just like the UK release of Deadpool is this year. Wow. Is it? Mm -hmm. Damn. Deadpool's, Deadpool's actually coming out. Yeah, Deadpool's in like two months. I don't, I don't feel like it's going to be real till we're like in the theater and I'm looking at it. I'm yeah. Like, it's I, actually it's so... right here. I feel like it's going to be real, not even the second trailer. I think I need to be like, I might have to finish the movie to know it's real. Yeah. I'm so excited. I haven't been this excited for a movie it, in a long time. It definitely time. doesn't feel real. Because we've had one trailer that I haven't seen in a theater yet, which is also weird. It's crazy how like the, the gaps in, like you think like Deadpool movies would just be fucking like greenlit like nobody's business, but they just, <laughs> there's these are gaps between them. I, the merger's crazy, and I also think Ryan Reynolds wants to make sure they're great. Like I think he really has a lot of control in a way that other creators don't, so it's like we got to fine tune this. Yeah, that's why I bought Mint Mobile. Yeah, it works. He's good at marketing. But yeah, uh, I cannot wait. I can't, can't believe that's this year. I'm so excited. Ronan Unchained. Hi, fellas. Will you be uploading your panel from WonderCon? I need to look at the footage. The audio is not the greatest. We did not Quality plan control. this. One day we were going to plan seen a court. There was a whole thing where like we had a camera mm -hmm. and mic, and then I misunderstood someone else saying they were you know, they got some recording. I didn't realize it was just a phone thing, so I didn't actually set my thing up. And I was like, oh shit!" So kind of dropped the ball there. Mm. Um, good panel though. It's a good panel. Really heartfelt and different. <laughs> Wish I could show it to y'all. It's a very different tone than even what's being struck here. It's so different when you get to interact in person. Just kind of like the mood we were all in Seeing beforehand. Eyeballs. It was just like the connection, the heart to heart, and we like to let people just kind of like even chat and participate. We don't, we're not just like one question at a time. Don't talk, you know. We like to like let we are up here, you are down there. Yeah, even though that's what I'm thinking internally, I prefer uh, just to have the optics Humble. look and look like we are a community. Uh, Julia Garner is a hell of a talent that shouldn't be dismissed. I beg to disagree. Um, I haven't seen her in anything, so nay, she doesn't have a ball sack. John reuniting with Red Worms, my heart. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, John Bernthal with Daredevil. Red. Got it. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Did not did not interpret that at all. I thought you were doing some like song from the south. Uh, John reuniting with yeah. Red. <laughs> I hope to see you all at SDC. <laughs> I really did not know. I love that that sentence. You just said it and paused. Like yeah, I have like, no like, idea. Is this like a weird? What is it? Thing? He's kidding. We getting pizza and beers. Uh, maybe SDCC. Big maybe. I Not loved sure. last time, uh, and I love San Diego Comic-Con. Hopefully it works out. I was just happy to see you there. Also, Gamer MJ back at it. I just want to say thank you, guys. I had two bad days this week. Let's make it a third. And putting on your reactions to X-Men and Bad Batch actually made them better. <gasps> Look, X-Men's an obvious one, Koi. But mm -hmm. Bad Batch is that weird show that we should have just quit a long time <laughs> ago due to how... Much of a low, consistent performer it is. Yep, yep, and he's still doing but it. But we're just like, we've made it this far. Gotta commit. It's the final season. We're doing it. X-Men 4, nah. was it? We shot that. And then immediately at 1 After. in the morning, I'm shooting Bat Batch, knowing... This Dozens of views. It's probably not going to be worth it for you guys. I walked out. But I saw Michael Tesla coming in. 1 a.m. shift change. And it's because of those kind of comments that keep us feeling good. And we want to nurture that side of reject nation more. Michael Tesla got all the first questions. At, uh, it Con. was Michael's panel it was more Michael's than ours panel. by yeah. far. And I was very happy yeah. for him. Greg, we are getting a reaction to Tales of the Empire trailer with MJ Tester. No, but we, I mean, there's shorts. 
we will be doing uh, the episodes. You bet your ass. Anything to help Michael shine a little bit more. Yeah. And oh my God, Chris Wamoff. Look at this mofo. Whoa. Oh God. Coy, we're streaming for another few more hours. Okay. He just bought you some time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is. I'm going to have to go and take that out. Extremely pocket. generous. That Again, is just he's kind. always coming in here with these super generous. That is bananas. And he's usually doing it when it's you and I and not when John's here. He's just pointing out things. I just want to point that getting, out. Hi, John. We'll John, you watching? Chat. Yeah. You watching, sure. John? I've been this is his Solomon Grundy I've moment. been wanting to elevate all the hosts here, mm -hmm. but there's one I'm going to push down the barrel. <laughs> you should see it. That was actually what the WonderCon panel was about. Yeah. Just pushing it's John just like, shut down. up, John. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let Michael talk. <laughs> Anyone but John. <laughs> we love John. No, that's great. Thank you so much. Oh, we'll take the money and move on. Uh, no, yeah, what did you, what did you say? Too thank long. You, thank you so much for an insanely generous super chat. In case you guys don't know, it's 250 big ones. Crazy. I, I have been, and we deserve it. Obviously. Obviously. It's a PlayStation we, we, 5. We absolutely uh, earned it. Yeah. I've been waiting uh, to ask this question. What is the most creative thing you've seen in a comic or media? Either an original gimmick or fourth wall break or something that was just a creative, unique way to capture the story. I'm going to go with a very under-talked-about movie that I, I think maybe is actually getting a lot of love lately. It's one of those. Um, the Wachowskis' Cloud Atlas. It's been on my... And I'm Big saying that, that not because... I'm just going to go on my heart because it's been on my mind a lot. Mm. Um, maybe because of the conversation of the Wachowskis coming around. And that was because... Um, I remember watching that in the theaters and hating my experience. Oh, really? I was hating this movie. I was not appreciating the shifts. I couldn't get invested. I thought it was, like, too tonally jarring. Um, and I thought it was distracting with the casting. I don't know what happened in this same exact... I saw people walking out. I loved that movie. And I saw... And it was obviously having a hard time registering with audiences. It was in the theater. Halfway through, I don't know what happened... But suddenly I was like, huh, I think I'm starting to enjoy, enjoy this movie. <laughs> you realized it was the true true. And then, and then as it kept going, I was like, I'm really invested in this. And then when it was cutting back and forth between all the storylines at the crescendo, yeah, I was like, this shit is intense. <laughs> it's like an orchestra coming yeah. together, and it's based around an orchestra, and the emotional through line is what, like, edits and it's, it's it was three directors they had to pull it off yeah. with i think it was like six i i, I could be remembering this wrong uh I'm, I'm, my mind is saying six writers uh i don't remember who the third director was sir some controversial uh casting choices <laughs> looking back on it but as a creative decision uh i i think that is one that is very much slept on and shows the it's like a very unique anthology Cloud Atlas stars Tom Hanks and Halle Berry were the main stars. And it is a, it's a, it's the strangest anthology movie you'll mm -hmm. see because most anthology movies go one story at a time and they're cutting back and forth between like this is six not that. different stories yeah. that are kind of tethered. And it cuts <laughs> and, and the edits aren't chronological or anything. That no, it's it, like it's very a, different timelines. But it's yeah. emotion that connects them. And exactly. so it edits around emotion. And it's like the universal it feeling. Builds of, yeah, it's like it's, an orchestra. Like when you get, like an orchestra like has an instrument, 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 and then they layer, they layer, they layer. And then as it crescendos to the magic of the piece, the movie feels that way. Yeah. And the movie's about music in, in its own way. Like you're looking at very different time periods and there is very it's it's a very strange film yeah um, it's really special but it is i think if you give it a chance and you let it wash over you yeah it becomes an experience um so yeah i'd say cloud atlas for sure is my answer um i'm gonna go with a comic because you said comic or media uh and i was trying to think of a comic that especially like jarred me uh, i love animal man i think it's one of the best fourth wall breaks in the history of comic books i love I, the animal with rob schneider he loves the animal uh but but i think uh, a great recent version of how wowed i was by the animal man animal man's grant morrison by the way and animal man is so good at it, so you're reading a comic, and it's about this guy that can talk to animals, and it's a really beautiful story of um, trying to be like more eco aware. And the character talks to animals, but it's it's kind of an eco story. And you're like ten issues in, and all of a sudden the the speech bubbles start talking to you, 
like you while you're reading it. And oh, then all weird. of a sudden, like you turn a page and there's like blank behind him and the comic character is like looking at you. And then you realize for the next few issues, like you're in control, but he's controlling the pace and it's written so well, you actually feel like you can't stop. Strange. So it's a fourth wall break that, that pulls you in in a way that I've never experienced again. But recently, something was similar enough to that, that. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Eh. Uh, but recently, something was similar enough to that that I don't think has gotten as much love. Because Grant Morrison's Animal Man is one of the great comics. Um, I think there's this book that needs more attention. It did win an Eisner, and it did get some, some, some love. But it, it is so special. And uh, it's called uh, It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. And it is a book... By a very uh, new, like within the last 10 years, a comic creator. I think the girl's like 26. And she's an artist. And she was still. And she wrote her dark ideations as a way to um, navigate what it was like (laughs) from the outside. To heal herself. And when you read this book, you're able to feel that darkness. And you feel the uplift of, of... overcoming trauma you feel this closure and she's an artist that works in multiple mediums and multiple styles so there's characters that talk to each other like voices in her head that are like helping her but also you see why she was there and you're just going on this journey through someone's actual mind and it's so impressive uh and and the fact that she's uh, you know young and and basically um it, it like changed what i thought the medium could accomplish uh, and I've been reading comics, like I learned to read of comics. So, you know, 30 years into reading comics, 30 plus, was so impressive to discover a new use of the medium. Uh, and and the girl's a delight. Our name's um, uh, Zoe Throwgood, and it's a single book. Like, it's one novel, and it's called It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. And um, the, the tagline is, this book shouldn't exist. And it's and it's so powerful, and it's so special. And if you pick it up, you can, like, send her a message, tell her I sent you. Because, like, I want everyone to discover this book, and it's really special. It's from Image Comics, Lonely at the Center of the Earth, truly transcendent work. Damn. Thank you. Thank Sorry you for, for saying the word I didn't know. I, so it's my, okay. I hey, learned a new one. But Coy, it's really special. Coy, listen. Where's the camera pointed at us? I'm not going to lose my shit. <laughs> He'll wait until after. I know how this culture works. Yeah. I got to watch wel- myself. He knows I'm going away, so he can't, he can't black us. my eyes. Oh, the Department of Truth is also another truly, truly incredible bit of the medium. Hold on. I'm shouting out Bad Medicine. And I saw Galaxy Geeks in here earlier. Fellow React channels that deserve a lot of love. And I'm pretty sure Galaxy Geeks. Do you guys work with Prepper? Our thumbnails look remarkably similar. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe not sharing that link now. Yeah, maybe all. not. I don't know how uh, much Prepper, we wanna... speak up. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, uh, didn't share a link to my channel. Yeah, when I was plugging you, it. Muted me. Coy, That's what he did. He muted me. You dumbass! I put up here on the community. I literally link your name, your oh, actual really? channel. When oh, I that's nice. when nice. I do that, I'm like, hey, look, look, you click that, it goes right to you. Every time. Oh, that's great. Why don't you shut up? Oh, all right. Shut up. That's fair. Just shut up. <laughs> this is the abuse I got for saying words I shouldn't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, but not about that. We all know Greg is super abusive off camera. Yeah, that's that is the word of. I think if there's if there's nothing I want to be remembered for, it is my uh, draconian style <laughs> around here. The gamer MJ. All right, guys. In five minutes, we're gonna turn off. We're gonna go through. We're gonna answer every super chat, but we only got five more minutes to submit any more super chats or stream labs. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure we're on track and still give qualitative answers without being like. <laughs> Thank you again, Chris Waymo. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it took extra time for you because let's face it. You <laughs> the Gamer MJ. There is a character in the new Fantastic Four run that is the spitting image of Dev Patel Koi. His name's oh. Dev Patel Koi. Uh, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, I read Life Death before the X Men episode. Can't wait for part two. I did get the physical ones, but they are in pristine condition. I went digital. Ooh. So you bought them, bagged and boarded them, kept them safe, and then read them digitally. That's what I do with any book older than like the 80s. Um, I. I'm very intrigued by who you think is the spitting image of dead. Oh, I know. Now I had to say it out loud. Yes. And the new run is so, so, so good. Uh, definitely check out the new run of Fantastic Four. I think it's one of the best runs in the history of Fantastic Four. A 60-year running comic, and right now it's accessible. Like, you can pick up this comic. I think it's on issue 18. Go pick up Fantastic Four. It's really, really special. Um, it deals with, like, the science of the Fantastic Four, but it makes you feel smart because you're understanding really deep concepts. It's, it's able to do that thing like good teachers do, where it's able to articulate something so well, you feel more informed for knowing it, and you'll actually use it later. But it's a comic book about the smartest people in the world. And yeah. doing that while telling great adventure stories like the Fantastic Four should, highly recommend it. 
Joker 2, folding a deuce. Yeah. All right. Let me check, make sure Streamlabs are done. Then we're going to hop back to the supers. I hope you guys see that we still do like to look at the regular chat. Okay, cool. We are done. Thank you so much, everyone who contributed to our Streamlabs. I hope we don't miss any. I'm going to go back to here. Well, whoa. You can fold a deuce. Yeah, if you I'm, believe. I'm calling it a Joker 2 fold the deuce. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't do well, that's our that's our that's our fun. <laughs> <laughs> We'll find out. Joker two folding a deuce. <laughs> What'd you guys think? I was folding a deuce. It's a funny title. <laughs> I love comedy. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Let me reload this. Koi. Folia Dukes. Folia. Oh, the Dukes boys. I want to know who are the people who you know, are. There was a spinoff of Dukes of Hazard with a guy named Koi. Really? Yeah, one of the cousins of the Dukes of Hazard's name was Koi, spelled the same. It's the only time I've seen my name in media other than Luke Perry, whose real name was Koi. Rest in peace. The great Koi Luke Perry. I hope that when uh, Joker 2 trailer comes out, that people are actually not typing in Joker 2. They're like. Learning French. Joker Folia Dukes Duke. trailer. <laughs> It's definitely good for Joker SEO. Joker fully. <laughs> De mixing English and French is great for SEO. I will be able to remember who the last one is. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I got this. Mm -hmm. I got this. Yes. You can tell. I got this. No. 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 That's not the last one. That was the last one. No, this was the last one. Are there any more? But that was the last one. Mm -hmm. Calmness yep. Yep. is the key to success. Hey, Mix. With the Zendaya one, yeah, the chat's been awesome today. I should agree. Agree. It's the energy. It's the energy. I know. I found it's been a really angry week on the internet, so I really appreciate it. Hey, man, we just want to cultivate more positivity. We're trying to get that minor market. <laughs> um, what's Craig's opinion? As I said, it's the that, smallest niche. We negative. want to find yeah. the tiniest corner. Um, no, you guys are great. What's, what's Greg's opinion on the Supergirl director news? I'll tell you. Couldn't be more thrilled. Already know Koi's. And the fact that we should write after Superman and Peacemaker, I don't know who's directing it. Who's directing it? Craig Gillespie. And what did Craig Gillespie do? Uh, last year, the very underrated Dumb Money. Uh, a couple of years prior, Cruella, which shows how good he is at world building. And also, like, the, the performances in Cruella are a bit slept on. I think that Emma Stone's always good, so people don't realize. Like, that movie's got some great performances. Underrated uh, actress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Only no two no Oscars. one's recognized her Who's, talents. No, but I'm, like, when you're that yeah. good, you don't look at a movie. Yeah, like, Meryl sure. Streep doesn't go, like, oh, that one good Meryl Streep joint. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she uh, he did Itonia, which I thought was incredible, uh, especially performances. Is that how you Margaret. pronounce it? I thought it was Itanya. Itanya. It's spelled Tonya. I don't know. I don't have any friends named Tanya or Tonya. I knew it Tanya with an A. Anyway, made I Tanya. I haven't seen any of his movies. Uh, and then also uh, the Fright Night remake with Colin Farrell, which I is love that movie. He made so that? good. Yeah, made okay. that. Not and uh, a few episodes of Pam and Tommy, the uh, the miniseries about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. Oh, really? Uh, did a few episodes of that. He's really good. Uh, and I think his overall repertoire shows. Good at directing actors, good at world building, and good at establishing a world. And I think you need that for this story in particular. It's a Supergirl story that basically is like a mix of DC and Star Wars. It's a cosmic tale. So world building is really important. Also, obviously, getting the performances out of the actors. Because Supergirl, as we've seen her in media, is often like very positive. But Supergirl in the comic like grew up on an asteroid watching her world die. So she's like a lot <laughs> yeah. more hardened and intense. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Uh, sounds like a great pick. <laughs> 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 That's why I wanted it in the thumbnail. <laughs> yep, because you knew that an hour and a half in. Yeah, someone some, would ask. Someone would finally someone bring up this Supergirl. Uh, emoji would ask. <laughs> Thank you, Amix. I wanted to We're talk about it. We're slowly trying to transition more non-comic stuff. That's why, like, the they, Matrix. That's why they did Pooniverse. That's why they did Matrix. Because I it. love movies, yeah. and it's so funny We're that everybody's slowly, like, "Who's the comic slowly guy?" Slowly like, trying to transition but... more uh, out. Because, uh, yeah, other, then we could do more live streams. Yeah, we can yeah. make them not just when there's comic news. Yeah. Um, never lose your nerd. Thanks for being here again. Oh, guys, um, just to be disciplined here, I will have to – I'm going to first turn off the Super Chats, and we're going to read the rest. I do want to talk about Civil War, but that's going to be dangerous. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be the messiest discourse on the Internet. You guys want to see the greatest the thing Alex that Garland you, YouTube says when you turn Oh, this there off. it is. If you continue, your fans will no longer see Super Chats to purchase off. You'll I no longer understand the implications of this action. What have you done? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just make sure he's the last. And then. Uh, yeah, Sebastian Stan was Tommy. 30 minutes. Tommy. 30 minutes. 
All right, sweet. Guys, I should have grabbed a snack. Yep, we got work to do after. Guys, Skeets. I'm hungry. Here we go again. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, never lose your nerd. Not sure about this uh, female silver surfer. Not familiar with the character. Just make a good Fantastic Four movie for once. Love you guys as always. That is and should be the primary focus. It really should be. Make a good be. Fantastic Four movie. Because, let's face it, man. Fantastic Four, I know a lot of love has come around for the original. I liked Rise of the Silver Surfer. Uh, ge ge um, genuinely. Mm -hmm. I, I did like that movie. I think it's better than the first one. Uh, the fan four stick. You know, Ooh. underrated. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not a good movie. <laughs> one yeah. of the worst comic yeah, movies. That is not a good movie. Um, yeah, wow, that last half is just really It's insane something. how it takes a turn. Yeah. Like, uh, I wasn't in the like host space as strongly, so I saw it like when it came out on a Saturday. And all the word of mouth was so horrible. And like 20 minutes in, I was like, this isn't that bad. Yeah, and I'm, then there's a moment where it's like one year later. And I was like, what it's, did it it's come once back they get to? Their, yeah, once they do the it's one year later. It's so like, bad. What is this? Yeah. And all the scenes they clearly cut, like the Fantastic Card and stuff we saw behind the scenes footage of, like they just cut the movie that was Fantastic Four. I was actually digging the movie. I was like, yeah, it's not exactly the lighthearted flair, but I'm kind of liking this body horror. And then all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah. I just want a good Fantastic Four movie. I agree. Uh, whatever that looks like, I'm ready for it. I agree. I agree. I agree, man. At the end of the day, you're right. Bringing it back to that. Sam Spring. Hey, Greg. It's me. That's you. I realized the other day I've been watching for nearly a decade. Well, good. Good. From back in the day watching Ryan Wright. <laughs> Miss that guy. Certainly wouldn't put up with the wife he has now. Or a lady <laughs> surfer. Or a lady in general. Women shouldn't leave the kitchen. Hey. They can't surf in the kitchen. See, you grow the channel. <laughs> Is that a Jonah? Yeah, I just said it. Oh, so, um, <laughs> oh that would be a crazy. <laughs> I feel like that's a Jonah Hill joke. Jonah Hill as Norrin Rad to a female silver surfer. <laughs> See, you grow the channel and review some of my favorite contests with great Q with the great work. Hey, man, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I've, I know I've been helping to guide and lead this channel, but I, I have not done it alone, and that is for sure. Uh, bringing on um, other people to the team. Not this guy, but everyone else uh, has really been amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, no, it's, it really is, a, is. At the end of the day, it is a team effort from all around. Obviously, John and uh, the you know we've been through. So it's kind of cool because like we have one editor, and then who was helping us out, and then we have an editing team, and then now that one editor who is gone, he's now part of the team with us again. So it's like kind of all coming around and like having hosts like Koi and. Tara, Roxy, Aaron, Andrew, all of them, man. They're all amazing. And, you know, we got people behind the scenes to help out, too. You guys don't even probably know about. <laughs> people like, holiday is a big part. So, yeah, it's a big team effort. And at the end of the day, I do rule with an iron fist. And all that. Mm -hmm. um, I do say, don't forget who's in charge, people. Yep. You answer to me at the end of the day is what I tell everyone. Wear this shirt. <laughs> Shut <laughs> yeah. your mouth. Edit that part. Wait in yeah. the shed. <laughs> Wait in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> That's your green room. This hot shit. Just, just baking in the sun. Unable to breathe in shit. You can only eat oranges. <laughs> There's weird rules here. I do have a bunch of you oranges I could technically be snacking on right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You literally yeah, have yeah, sustenance. Yeah. We'll grab a map. Um, be delicious. Fresh. Nick Alexander. Love all your crew and what you do. Are you going to have the live show available? Yeah, I really botched that. That that's the problem when you uh, it's the problem when you lead. You gotta take responsibility for shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play <blame> people. <laughs> I'm the one that I'm does like, this. Oh, it. I'm the one that I does this. Have just, I, uh, like, I, I could easily be like, I thought this person said <laughs> and then I'm like, nope. But I nope, need to check. I on have that. to nope, nope. It's my I gotta I gotta take responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was fun. So then day, yeah, I, I have to, uh, I do have, because otherwise it's not going to change. So I, 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 I should have better prepared. Uh, it, it really, it is my fault. I should have better prepared. I should have had, because if it's say I want to film it and I misunderstood something in a day, I should have, I should have double checked in the midst of rushing. But we've been talking about doing something else that we could film. Yeah, like I'd love to do an actual just live event where people can come out. 
pay like five hundred dollars to see us in person, and then an extra five hundred for us to Chris sign Wham something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only Chris Wamoff <laughs> comes out. That'd be so fun. Yeah. He's Nick, an honorary yeah. reject at this point. Yeah, I mean, just have he us bought, on stage. He bought his way he in. He's earned it, man. Yeah, you buy your way into being on the show. He went the <laughs> Ivy League route. We yeah. have a library with his name on it outside. Um, the Chris Wamoff Library is how he's in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'd, we'd love to do a live event. We'd film that one. Uh, it's and been a big talk. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. I think with this crew, it'd be great. <laughs> that is my quote. I love that. <laughs> That's the problem when you lead. You have to take responsibility for shit. That is like modern day leadership talk right there. <laughs> yeah, and that's it's the problem when you lead. You got to take responsibility for whatever happens in the organization. <laughs> yeah, it's on you. You're the top. You got to take responsibility for it all. <laughs> um, Mick, no light. Julia Gardner aside, I'm sure she'll be great. You know, it's great. Honestly. Uh, I think there's a question coming up about trailer reactions, why we don't do them as often, and I will go into it. Uh, I just hope we get Lakeith as Norn Rad eventually. That's peak casting. Kiana would be peak as well. There's got to be something in there for Kiana, for sure. I'll just find myself watching interviews with Kiana. He's so magnificent. I'll forget that we that you introduced me to him. Your photo in my phone is you with Keanu because yeah. it's the happiest I've ever seen a person. Yeah. He's Not a, just you, but a person. It was so great. He does have this magnetic ability oh. to to make you feel like you're. He's not in a rush, and he's a, so captivating. Like when you're talking to him, he, like he listens so well. Like a, he's a better listener than talker. And apparently, that is um, uh, what people say is like in real life. Like when he when he when fans come up to him, like he doesn't make you feel like he's in a rush to get through this conversation. Yeah, and I'm the opposite. <laughs> we really that's I'm why like, he didn't show you the live footage from WonderCon because Greg's like move it along yeah. with your answers <laughs> ridiculous I'm like I'm not Keanu Reeves <laughs> I harbor all money <laughs> I'm not buying you I motorcycles I am buying a freaking motorcycle you get no Rolexes <laughs> yeah. frankly it's about me Keanu would be a great I don't know what tribunal. this giving attitude is <laughs> doesn't work does not work uh, Keanu would be a great living tribunal I love that We got to embrace the silences. Okay. <laughs> PLT projects. <laughs> uh, thank you, PLT. Well, you were going to talk about the trailer. Uh, I, I think giving, there's a question coming up. I was um, giving you space. I'm definitely the only person PLD project says this. Oh, the only person clamoring for it, but give me the Juno version of Silver Surfer. Mm. Hercules' granddaughter and the laden version of Hulk. Herc. I don't know what any of this means, but it sounds auspicious. <laughs> well, we did get uh, Hercules at the end of Thor, so we know he's canon. Oh, uh, God, that's right. Yep, remember when uh, Roy Kent was Hercules Jesus. for 12 seconds? So he's in there. I know we want to bring positivity, but MCU, what are you doing? <laughs> There's so many characters. But we can't <laughs> speak bad about that choice because it's a white man. <laughs> oh, that's true. Fair enough. That's Fair true. Enough. That's true. Come on now. I'm just glad they didn't uh, douse him in makeup. Yeah. Not enough yeah. whites in the MCU, so we can't talk ill of the one we got recently. Um, no, but I, I think that Hercules would be fun as the villain of, of Thor 4, and that would be a fun way to bring in the Juno version. Uh, I don't know if that's what they're doing, because, again, I don't know how much I trust any of these reports. I feel like one person heard Julia Garner was cast as the Herald of Galactus, typed in Herald of Galactus, saw that it was Silver Surfer, and then by the time we heard it through the game of telephone and the internet, it was like, Julia Garner is Silver Surfer, and now there's just thousands of people like yeah. raging. So I'm going to wait and see the movie. I was excited for Hercules because everyone else loves Ted Lasso. You know, every you don't like Ted Lasso? I haven't seen it. But that's what everyone That's likes. my moment of silence. Yeah. Uh, the Hercules disrespect is deserved because all he did was stand and we needed better. It's not your Anya. No, that's How that's many Anya's that, do that, you that's know? That's not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not. I thought you spelled Anya's yeah. name. Yeah. That's her last name. Yeah. She like Hercules for some reason. I think she likes Roy Kent, or she just wanted to give me crap about like the the white man of it all. Oh, either one serves a narrative. All right. Yeah. Well, hi, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Smith. Don't like woke politics personally. I personally love woke politics. Yeah, talk it's about a word that totally means what you think I it means. I eat pizza and talk about it, but yeah. people do. So entertainment should stay neutral. Mm. Marvel can fix everything just by depicting the most popular versions of characters rather than gender race swapping. Yeah, they're doing it all the time. All the time. And it succeeds every time when they uh, don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess. You know, guess they made Doctor Strange another sex, and uh, that movie did so well. You know, that female Doctor Strange movie I saw was riveting. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Riveting. Uh, 
I don't think that art should be neutral because then it's not good. Like, I think art should say something. And most art is politically charged because that is something we deal with in all ways. I think the word politics has about as much relevance as the word woke in that we've abused it to the point of it being nothing. Um, I do believe we are in a position where we need to have our culture reflect our times. And I think our times are aggressively bad for a lot of reasons. And I think we're living through some... If we were a different generation... I think there would be a lot more guillotines. Like, I, I think that we're not as violent um, about the oppressive nature because we've got the opioid of the masses easier controlled. Like, we used to think the opioid of the masses was religion. Then it became television, and people worried that TV was going to make us into nothing like these mindless drones. I think that, that our phones have done what everyone feared the other things were going to do. I think every generation thinks they're the last generation. I think every generation gets apocalyptic. But I think we're actually seeing enough things that show, like, hey, we should react and I think that art is our way to react. And I think our art is our way to communicate. So I think that politics are inherent to survival. And I think that the way we say politics isn't actually what people think of with politics. So if you make art that's neutral, you're not saying anything and you don't deserve to make it. So um, I, I don't think we should swap everything. I don't think we should make everything another thing. But I do think that if you were writing comics in the 60s and every single character is white and now you're making movie in the 2020s and not every single person is white, maybe things need to change. And again, it's back to the pie metaphor. I think whites were used to having 80% of the pie. Now they have 50 and that 30 percent is all they're noticing i don't think it's fair to blindly say anything is woke or blindly anything is political but i do think it's fair to say that art should reflect the times and that people should be reflected in their art you know this is why i just stay at my cabin <laughs> the shed there's the cabin and there's a golf course <laughs> you don't need to like pay attention to any of this nah stuff. the yammering of the world outside that everyone else is fixated on greg's just making his billion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sitting at his cabin with his just, just counting money this is so much of this other mm. stuff that people are concerned about with their lives <laughs> and politics and just like get over yourself come guys. on chill out have a mojito yeah go to cuba on your speedboat <laughs> I Have you seen Miami Vice? Um, no, no, I've ha I've tried it. I don't like it. Oh, I don't like it. Coy, don't don't do it. Don't even do it. All right, do it. all right. All right. I did watch uh, the Al Pacino and De Niro scene from Heat again. Last oh, night. Uh, so you got some Michael yeah. Mann. All right. She's got a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's all you need from Heat. <laughs> Run no Heat in three hours. <laughs> three hours summed up in one sentence. It's true. You got your head all the way up it. <laughs> I want to see Greg do Heat, like the whole movie. <laughs> Just a Greg reenactment of all parts of Heat. Um, <laughs> Just so fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I do think that... Um, I, I think all people really care about is... It's something that it, I think what people are looking for is authenticity and genuine. Uh, as I do my Al Pacino impression, people are looking for authenticity and she genuine had a great in, ass. in their art. That's what they're looking for. And I think when we talk about like diversity pandering or whatever, that's when you could feel choices being made by a committee that is trying to placate without you could you could just tell when it's there, and then you could feel when it's real and i think as long as you can just feel that it's a real thing you're not really going to give a shit uh at the with the with the final product ultimately it always comes down to that end of the day people make their choices based off of emotion and that is the choice whether to like something or not like something is always an emotional based choice as well so when it comes down to the final product whatever it comes to these characters like we might have our preconceived notions or it should be this or whatever at the end of the day, if they do a great job and it feels sincere, like if there's a real heart to it or whatever, the emotionality is actually conveyed, you're not really going to give a shit at the end of the day about that other stuff. That's the way it always comes down to. Look at Miles Morales. Like, it's insane how much reaction there was to that at first, and now it's like the Spider-Man for exactly. the entire generation. Exactly. So I think it, that was authentic. That came from a place of wanting to make a new character that appealed to an entire demographic of people that didn't feel like they were seen, and that character is now an entire generation's version of that character for everyone that looks in any way. So that yeah. came from a place of heart, not pandering. I do, and I, and I feel like I'm... There, uh, there's so much of the other perspective about this stuff on the internet that I react in a way that is way more extreme than how I feel uh, day to day. There are things that are absolutely pandering. There are things that are absolutely exhausting and that they're just trying to get some check mark checked. And I hate that stuff. But I feel like there are so many worse things than 
wanting people to be seen that I would rather comment on the times it works than let the people that are always talking about it even when it doesn't work. So those those people are covering the, the bases for the pandering. They're doing just fine. There are plenty of times I think it's inauthentic. I'm talking about the times it's authentic and it helps people feel like they have a place in the world because yeah. that's what art is supposed to do. It's emotion made into something that you can share and I want people to feel that they can share that emotion. Have you ever noticed that when it is authentic, people don't talk about Ever. It? Because that's that's because it's authentic. <laughs> yeah. Them. But then if you like look back, you're like, oh wait a minute, they're actually doing the representation. They're actually doing all that. But it, y- because it's authentic, you're not freaking talking about it. So it's kind of strange that they don't. It's kind of like visual effects. A lot of times, there's you, so many visual effects that don't get credit. Hear them talk when it's bad. You know, you point it out. But most of the time, uh, when it's great, you kind of just expect it to be great because it's by standard. You know, um, and it's really funny with uh, like representation, even for me, who like I obviously see myself everywhere. But like Boston is uh, whenever there's a Boston thing, I'm like, ah! and it, it feels so special. Whenever the, like the the Barry Keoghan in Eternals, I was like Irish accent. And so I want more specificity for people, not less. Like, I don't yeah. think we should make this broad strokes thing. I think it's really cool to have people like have the specific thing that feels like them. Absolutely. Syrup Sailor. Hey. Hey, Supergirl would be great with Gillespie. Gilepsi. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Yeah, Greg is a huge Craig Gillespie been, fan. He knows all of his work. The whole time I've been saying like, that. Like, put it in the thumbnail. I'm I've like, been no. like, he should be running the DC Universe. The whole day, I was like, Greg, it's not in the thumbnail. And then he switched it out. And he was like, Supergirl is obviously the headline. No, yeah. no, no. Oh, my God. Millie Alcos would be great. Make no light. Thank you, Make no light. Minor differences are kind of the main point of alternate realities, which is why I think Julie Garner is fine for um, the Suicide Squad. Theories, I already got her name, Shala Mall. Silver Surfer so is what, what he's... Oh, that's me? Oh, I thought I meant the other one. Mm. Theories, oh, it, her name is Shala Ball, but I think he's... Oh, yeah, it's surfer. SS. Okay. Yes. Theories Take two. on a potential plot. Um, Koi, you got 30 seconds. I think it's going to be the Fantastic Four trapped in another reality, another time that is going to be like a, a, a retro futuristic 60s. They get either through the negative zone or the quantum realm, since there's been so much quantum realm. How does Silver Surfer come in? They brought into our world, I think the marker is going to be that the Silver Surfer in their world is a female Silver Surfer, and the Silver Surfer in our world is Norrin Rad. I think it might be revealed either immediately in the second act or into the third act where they realize, oh, this isn't home. We're not in Kansas anymore. I think the plot is going to be largely based around the scientific community and why they're Marvel's first family. I think that Sue Storm is either going to have Franklin in the film or already have Franklin making them a true <laughs> first family. Um, I don't think we're going to get um, like a, a, a definitive origin, like first, second, third act. I think they're already going to be powered, maybe use flashbacks. And I think the big bad is going to be someone other than Doom, making Doom more of an Emperor Palpatine. I think he'll be in the film, but I don't know if it might just be a post credit setting him up for Secret Wars and allowing him to be the big bad of a greater thing. And I think it'll be um, a really fun uh, old school sci-fi feel like Star Trek. Um, the, the Kelvin universe Star Trek, I think is going to be kind of that influence and tone. Sweet sauce. Great answers all around, Koi. X Skulls. Well, let me get this name here. X Skulls and Lace X. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Not related to the chat at all, but hey, thank you for being here. Um, but are you ever going to react to the Split Trilogy, please? Well, I've seen the Split Trilogy. Mm, makes it hard. Uh, I wonder if there's other people here who haven't seen the Split Trilogy, because that would be a great reaction Yeah, well, at those twists and turns. Um, <laughs> yes. Unbreakable is my favorite Shyamalan movie. Um, I love that movie. Wow. All right. What do you have? Oh, it's God. hard to top Sixth Sense. Like, just for the impact, like, culturally, that was a, such a huge moment in my life. Uh, I also love Signs, but I think it's Sixth Sense, Unbreakable Signs. So in the orders he releases movies? Maybe. No, I think Signs was second. No, Signs was third. Was it? Mm-hmm. Okay, then I guess yeah, the I remember it immediately because Unbreakable was the second movie. Okay, yeah. I was like, oh, he's followed it up, and then that's that's why they advertise it as a horror movie, and it made no money. Yeah. Because it's not a horror. Movie. <laughs> not at all. But those three are all great. I love the Split trilogy. I don't like the final one. Really? Really didn't. Oh, that's a bummer. Kind of hate that one. All right. That one really disappointed me. I remember liking it, but I've only seen it once in theater, so I clearly didn't love it. Terra and Roxy for Split Trilogy. That's when, they, that's when it stopped being a movie, and it just became Shyamalan. Just going. Talking. Talking. 
Like, I'm going to make myself a character. <laughs> he just went full yeah. lady in the water. Yeah, here's my outline. <laughs> you guys, speak my outline. <laughs> here's my ideas. Speak my ideas. Exposition, exposition, idea, yeah. idea. Guito Galindo, welcome back, my friend. Good to see you, man. By their comments, haters are there just to feel seen. I don't know. Comic books like Koi experts. Thought it was a different word, but a simple Google search tells me that Shala Ball, Norn's lover, is depicted as joining him as the second Silver Surfer. Bam! Boom! Shabalaba, Shalabala. That's the new. That's the new thing we're gonna say. Boom! Shalabala. Shalabala. Boom! Shalabala. Yeah. Oh my god, we gotta have that. Boom! boom Shalabala. Shalabala. When when it turns out that Norn Rad is is Silver Surfer. Yeah. Boom! Shalabala. Boom! Shalabala. Hard to say. Uh, I do think it is an easy Google, and I appreciate you uh, la- letting people know. Like, yeah, it is. It is not a new character, and it's also not a gender swapped character. It's someone you can Google because they've been around since Silver Surfer issue one. I think that uh, news articles, as much crap as we get for clickbait, I think that every major news source now is clickbait. I think Variety, Deadline, CNN, Fox News, the NBC, all of it is like, how do we make this sensational? We get crap um, for clickbait. Uh, no, not us. Not I feel YouTubers. Like, I feel like we've dialed it back. I think we're, I mean, I work with people I respect, and I wouldn't respect <laughs> us if we were as bad as some places. I feel like we dialed it back. Even, yeah. Even the thumbnails as feeling hopeful, question mark? Yeah, it's not when like. I could have been like something way more. Could have been like, a lady? <laughs> <laughs> I love the Should idea. we be mad? <laughs> Silver lady, question mark? Yeah. Can women surf? Um. No, it, it, it's it's uh, I think it's a problem overall, especially when it took you how long to do that. So, yeah, I think it's just people. Um, people want to be mad, man. We have a lot to be mad at for real. I think people want to be mad at stuff that can't kill us. So they get mad at movies. Uh, I just got you know, what's what's funny about this, the side of the Internet that, like I said, there are some channels that I think like they, they do produce good videos. But it's the audience they attract and feed into and that emotion that I'm just I'm personally not interested in having us feed into here on a consistent basis <laughs> is. uh you, you gotta imagine when female silver surfer gets announced. Do you think these channels are actually mad, or they no. go in, "Ooh, I could milk Profit. this and make money and 100%. say the same kind of shit I've always been saying"? That's the attitude. What worries you me is they don't even realize it, it anymore, though. And I don't it, think it's as conscious as I wish it was. That I think they immediately just leap to it because that's what they've been programmed to be. And I, I think a lot of these hate channels okay. don't get to enjoy things anymore, actually, because if they enjoyed something, they don't have content to make out. And well, I f- yeah, and that's the thing is, I f- I feel like that I feel that's who they are as individuals. But uh, as the second this news happens, there is a joy for them because they can make a money. They can make money off of feeding off of other people. Hundred percent. Hey, because I I. I fully don't believe that they're they're actually they're vehemently pissed. To them, it's like boom, dollar bill science. And what's I so can, funny yeah. is like Craig Gillespie, a man, yeah. is directing Supergirl. I guarantee yeah. not a single one of those channels that made a I'm so mad Silver Surfer is a woman made a I'm so mad a yeah. man's directing Supergirl. Yeah. Like that is so hypocritical. I, I think that a woman should be able to direct the Avengers, and I think a man should be able to direct Supergirl. That's a very good like, point. I don't think we are looking at things in the same fair lens. And I think a lot of that's from pendulum swinging, but I think it's so funny how like uh what's the what's the idea of the politics um 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 um, um, um. not not ah oh, shit what there's a term for it culture wars like the cultural politics. I think cultural politics are very one-sided because there are a lot of people that are just too informed to speak up about stuff that's more nuanced. Yeah. It's just going to be the loud voices that want to cause those clicks. McNo Light. I've been reading the thank you McNo Light. I've been reading the Ultimates lately, and I've been enjoying it so much. A bit disappointed that we'll probably never get to see them on the big screen. Uh, they could be s- a cool Cosmic Avengers team. Hey, I would say probably never. They're going to run out of shit to do at some point. <laughs> I love 60 years of comics, man. They're going to need to go like, way into the can and be like, what we got here? Uh, here, <laughs> dust it off, you know. See what they can do. Throw it in an AI machine so they can get back the image. And Oh, that's what it is. The Ultimates. And then we'll get the Ultimates. I think the Ultimates are kind of the version of the Avengers we got cinematically, but with a little less of that 2000s edge. Like, the, the 2000s were a really weird time in comics when the Ultimate stuff came out. There was a lot of, like, post 
the authority post squadron supreme edginess where it's like there's a moment in, in the ultimates that i love because it's so ultimates where captain america's got you know the the a on his forehead and there's this whole badass fight and then the final splash page he goes do you think this stands for france <laughs> and it's basically like we don't bail because we're america and like captain america to me is not like Mia! but i like that for that arc but I do think the cinematic nature of the Ultimates is what led us to the Avengers. So I don't know if we'll ever get a team called the Ultimates because I think we're kind of taking the best of the Ultimates and making it cinematic. But I think if we made an Ultimates, it would be kind of like Snyder Super. Yeah. Let's see here. Eon I'm glad you're enjoying it. I think it's a great book. Ian Blush. Hey, everyone. Ian says... If Disney's leading Deadpool and Wolverine keep the R rating, I hope the Daredevil show feels the same. Happy John Berthold back. Let's go. I am curious what level of R rating they're willing to go mm -hmm. with it. And I'm going to try to mince my words here. Is because I think Deadpool and Wolverine is not going to have any problem at all going violent. It's sexual is the part where I think they're going to shy up a little bit. Like, would we get that beautiful montage that we have with him Dude, and Vanessa. Dude, the, the tour one. is such a lovely, like it's would a you, general montage of love. Would you have that? Is Disney willing to still let Deadpool get away with that? I think there'll be commentary that they didn't let them. Because even on, I remember like Jessica Jones. Yeah, the coffee. Luke Cage and Jessica, they went at it. Man. Yeah, I had to get some coffee. That, yeah, was, that was definitely they, Netflix. They, they went at it. I think that there won't be as much sex, but there will be uh, De Deadpool making a joke that Disney didn't let him. Like, I think the fourth wall break might be like, we'd show you the scene, but this is a Disney film. Like, I think that's how they'll do it, like the trailer did. Uh, I think that, that Disney is uh, letting them be the butt of the joke before they're letting them actually do things. But I do think Ryan Reynolds had some certain expectations of control. So I think that there will be more than Disney's probably comfortable with, but not as much as Ryan wanted. I think there'd be like a compromise. Because at the end of the day, like the first pegging scene in a major you know, superhero film is Deadpool. And that was a joke in the trailer. But whether or not that makes it into this next round of movies is the question. Uh, so, yeah, I think there'll be plenty of violence. Disney has no problem killing people. The problem they have with is people making new people. Absolutely. You can end lives. You can't create them. But thanks for the question. Adit Mahmood. Hey. Hey, thank you. If you had to cast up as a superhero, who would it be? Green Arrow, Cyclops, <laughs> Mr. Sinister? Apparently Nightcrawler. <laughs> Apparently, I mean... Which we came up with all our own. We thought... When Nightcrawler was pitched our way, we thought that was a great pick. It's just... The, the one thing is that, you know, they have... Uh, they constantly... They usually take the people of color and, like, douse mm -hmm. them in makeup. And... And and that part of like, well, come on, Dev Patel, let's, yeah, let's give him some. I mean, he could be a good Cyclops. You block his eyes, Mister Sinister is doused in makeup, green. But but I do think he could bring the thing with Nightcrawler though is you could still bring a lot, a great performance, a lot of emotion to it because it's not makeup that is modifying the face. It's just c like blue. Yeah, like he's not trapped like the thing. Yeah, because even like uh, Zoe's, she's the one in Guardians, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's um, still like so yeah. much. Yeah, she's still a great performer. She's still excellent there yeah. because like it doesn't limit her at all, right? And uh, you can still make out that it's her, you know. So I think yeah, it could be a happy medium. And like I, they even did a good job. But but the, like would Marvel make do makeup for Nightcrawler? I certainly hope so. I hope so. I do not want to CGI. I mean, I didn't like. We didn't like CGI Beast. We were in like the tiniest minority of people were all so excited. And I was like, why is he from the cartoon? Just wait, wait for a few years from now. You're going to hate the way that looks. I guarantee it. Men's yeah, it, it not, not great. Yeah, you're going to hate it. Hate it, men's warehouse. It's wear. not going to age, good age good well. Um, gosh. Christian Unpronounceable. Pretend. No, Christian's always in our chats, man. What Pretend this is for subscriptions. LOL. I love the great work you guys do, and your opinions matter to me. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, just remember that if we ever have conflicting opinions, always go with ours. Yeah, over yeah. Yours. Remember, we're right. We're right. We have platform. Mm -hmm. We power. Yeah, yeah. Notice so we have the microphones, little keyboards, all, all right? Always doubt mm -hmm. if, you, you if you're disagreeing. slightly disagreeing. Right. Always go with our objective opinion because we've been obviously learning and reading and knowing more than anyone mm -hmm. so like yeah. if you if you go like ooh, like i feel differently know that you didn't read learn or know something that we clearly did because following 
Right. I mean, yeah. If you look at subscriber numbers, that's actually a data count of how much we're of, better. Of in likes. It's just enlightenment and validated. numbers. validated. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Your opinion matters to us, too. <laughs> <laughs> also, thank you. He always does, uh, like, a ton of uh, Twitch subscriptions, so that, that's, I think, what that reference is. So thank oh, you thank very you. much thank for you, throwing Christian. those our way. I appreciate it. Always here. Adita Tripathi. Excited for Daredevil. Glad to see John Berkthal. Foggy Karen. Best actor for Batman. Oh, my God. I'm going to go with uh, a, a, the child of Alan Richardson and Jensen Ackles. Greg, I love the trailer actors, but now you did them rarely. Quite like oh. your Monkey Man review or the say Indian John Wick. Yeah, uh, we don't really do trailer reactions that often. I mean, at first there was like uh, the copyright system of it, but at the end of the day, I did find that like as we've been loving the movie reactions and show reactions more, the less we expose ourselves to the trailers. In general, I've watched less it, trailers. Yeah, the better it, it the experience of it becomes. And it's like we're still going to do trailers, bec- um, but just we haven't been doing them as often. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, and, and sometimes, like, the, the work we do now for the channel takes up a lot more time than before. And once in a while, it's like, you know, I just, I'm, I can't wake up at 6 in the morning to do The Crow that day. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I'm very exhausted from the other work that we've been doing but yeah i mean i i still liked i know trailers were the thing that catapulted us um but i at the, at the end of the day uh we'll still be we're just gonna select we're a little bit more selective on uh how many we, we want to do now and when to do them like we're gonna do joker obviously joker. and like the second deadpool trailer yeah like the, the ones that are like well it'll be everywhere anyway we'll do yeah it'll be well worth it but like House of the Dragon, I was like, I'm already going to watch all these episodes. So I don't want to know anything. So let me just not watch this trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I know this trailer will get a lot of views, I'm like, nah, I'd rather skip it. Uh, also, uh, my Batman, um, and it's been oh, the yeah, guy for a long time. I still want Jake Gyllenhaal, man. And I saw uh, Anthony Cheeseman said Jake Gyllenhaal will be a good Batman or Joker. I think good, good Batmans are... That's kind of the ideal, right? Is someone that is that, like, that's the coin. That's the flip between the two. So I'd love to see uh, Jake Gyllenhaal as Batman because he has that darkness. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. And Let's 3D go. Roadhouse abs. Imagine Batman with that 3D Roadhouse ab body. We got a lot more to get through, Coy. Oh, let's, boy. Let's do it, man. You keep rambling about shit. Yeah. You're getting, like, freaking about politics and people's human rights. I mean, who should these people, that, why like, do they exist? God, we got shit to do Honestly. today, Coy. The unimportant stuff. We got shit to do. Okay. Willem Dafoe as DCU Joker would be amazing. Just shut up. Cole. I was trying not to <laughs> silence Craig. This is what he's like when we're off camera. I was trying to find my truth. So hungry. Nora <laughs> Hey, guys. Been enjoying your X Men reactions. Coy, you're like a comic book encyclopedia. Love all the info you provide. You guys rock. Well, Coy is definitely going to make shooting X-Men 5 an easy, breezy experience this Tuesday. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm the... Can't wait for this midnight experience with Koi. Greg looks at the Rejects roster and he goes, who is the easiest to deal with personally, <laughs> with their schedule, uh, just as as a, a Reject and share... Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, um, just, can't, I just can't wait for it. Guys... It's going to be worth it. I'm going to CinemaCon, and CinemaCon is in Vegas, and we are in not <laughs> Vegas. And so that is causing quite a trickiness since only Greg and I are doing the X-Men watch. Um, so we're going to try to figure that out, but oh boy. It's different when there's three people because we're like, all right, oh, one just, out. He's just not here. He just came up to me. He's like, oh, I've got to do tradi- tradition. I'm not going to be in one. I'm like, I'm not just going to go solo. What's we got, so funny is – Comic Corner launch. You got another interview coming out. I'm not just gonna like not do this with you. Everything around the episode is me, <laughs> like, and I'm so, not in the episode. So much about you being here that's important. Just pretend I said she are every time it's <laughs> spiral, and that'll be my experience. Of the episode is me being wrong about comic facts. Uh, I do uh, appreciate, and it is very complicated with schedules, and uh, I'm very excited for CinemaCon. But I've actually like we talked about CinemaCon about six months ago. And things just changed with what the plan was going to be. But the whole time, I was like, oh, it's like a weekend. It's a con. And then, like, when the schedule came out, I was like, oh, it's four days. That's crazy. Must be through Monday. And then I, like, looked at the day on the calendar about two weeks ago. And I was like, so, Greg, it's um, 
it's Wally X Men's on, <laughs> and we have all this stuff around the X Men, and uh, oh, oh, oh no! And I've almost canceled like ten times because of the X Men. So I, I want to give Greg his flowers on camera that he has oh, made it possible. Doesn't know what's going on. He has X-Men. made it possible yeah. for yeah. me to go to CinemaCon and still cover X Men for you guys. Michael's helping out too. Yes, yes. Got this going. My God, what a complicated thing. Ragged wreck. What's your take on Al Richson wanting to be Batman? He wants to be Batman. That's my take on it. I think he'd be a. Fu- Have you seen Reacher? Uh, I've seen season one. I've watched season two yet. I think he'd be a real. And I've seen like interviews with him, asking, lobbying. I've seen like other, so like oh this guy's got more. Like I already love him as Jack Reacher, but he's not like he doesn't behave like. Jack Reacher. He's yeah. Fun. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like he's, uh, so that's that showed me that okay, he's not just like this character. So he could be both. I think I his build is enormous. It's enormous build. It would be nice to get like an enormous Batman, a giant Jim Lee Batman, like yeah. just that stature. Where you're like, huh? It might be easy to pinpoint who Batman is based. I was of thinking the like I giant. wanted his Batman, but if I saw Bruce, I'd be like. Oh, that's Batman. <laughs> Batman? Look how massive this guy is. That guy in the tux that is the size of a tree might be the tree-sized Batman vigilante running around town. But I think he would actually be a, a pretty damn good Batman. I think it'd be a great way to distinguish between the Pattinson Batman that is supposed to be more of a detective with the Batman that fits amongst the Justice League. From the beginning, I said, I think Matt Reeves' Batman should stay outside the DCU because it gives us a different take. If Superman landed in Matt Reeves' Gotham, I think that would sully the Matt Reeves' verse a bit. Whereas I think to make him so different, especially visually, that there can be a Batman that fits. Because the Batman in the comics does both. And I think it'd be cool to have a Batman that's a detective and this giant Hulk of a Richson, even though the plausible deniability of a man like that as Batman is pretty hard. Dude, I totally concur. Marley Morgan is also saying this. Thank you, Marley Morgan. Retro future makes me think of the Jetsons. That could be fun. Ooh. I'm assuming talking about Fantastic Four being retro yes, future. Yes, I'm into that. Dude, that's what we want. Marvel be more funny. Funny Marvel. It's definitely not been funny enough lately, and that's what they're missing. Well, more Easter they eggs, go for funny. more jokes. Marvel's was funny. Yep, sure Marvel's was. went for funny. Did that. Can you imagine if Marvel's came out one week before Loki season two, how different the conversation around Marvel would be. I remember that like pendulum swing where it was like one thing we loved, one thing we yeah. didn't like as much. And like if yeah. they had swapped at one point. All right. Like eliminate just our two opinions. Like I'm talking about the general zeitgeist around the Marvels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, can, I feel like it would just be a completely different conversation. And release dates are that important for a reason. Yeah. Because of the conversation is important. Well, yeah, because it's not about what's true. It's about what people think. And as soon as people think something's bad, people like it spreads like cancer. Like people think it's bad, think it's bad, think it's bad. Whether it's good or bad doesn't matter anymore. Like the truth isn't true. It's about opinion, which is interesting. Sammy Badenfeld. Hey, have either of you watched Hulu's Hit Monkey? Nope. If yes, thoughts. Nope, thoughts. But I appreciate the super chat very much so. No refunds. If no possible future reaction, uh, maybe. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Uh, there's honestly. a show on Hulu, and there's a great character that actually has some great team-ups with Deadpool named Hitmonkey. That is John Wick as a monkey. It is a it is an assassin monkey that wears a tux, and he is awesome. That's Hitmonkey. That I've, actually sounds like a f- show I would just love to watch. <laughs> it's great. I need to have some shows just for me, so that way I can be more authentic when it is just... Here. I just started uh, Peaky Blinders for that reason. Oh, I waited nice. for it to end completely so I wouldn't feel like I should comment on it, and now I'm loving it oh, yeah. as, a, as my own thing. That Hit Monkey show does sound good. I'm actually glad I just learned about it. I do have Hulu because Disney Plus forced it on me. Yes. D Murdoch. Hey, guys. I thought I'd throw this one out there. Burnthal's Punisher versus John Wick. Personal bias leads me towards Burnthal's Punisher. LOL. Sorry, Keanu. Super hyped for Daredevil Born Again, and I really am hoping for Midnight Suns. Uh, I feel like Bernthal's Punisher might ultimately win. I feel like John Wick's immortality is a problem. <laughs> I feel like they've just made him immortal now, and I feel like we still have some John Bernthal like plausibility of Did death. Did John Wick die? Yeah, but I don't know. If, in the, if they make a fifth Spoiler. one, maybe not. But they're talking about a fifth one, which I hope is him fighting down the gates of hell. That like the cool. like the Heaven's Gate, and there's a lot of stairs. Yeah. Uh, stairs. Yeah, I think I think uh nah, you know what? I take it back. I say I think John Wick. I think John I love John Bernthal, but they they give him too much realism. 
Uh, so I feel like John Wick because yeah. like they've escalated to such a level. Every time I see, jo- I'll look at the Marley one. Don't uh, don't let me forget Marley. Um, every time I see John Bernthal, he's just like drenched in wounds and blood. Right. Whereas like John Wick, um, he like falls from a, a <laughs> the 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 Continental, and the next day he's like, all right, I'm back in action, hitting this punching bag. Let's get some revenge. Yeah. Yeah. I- I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Wick winning, yeah. but you know yeah. because of writing. Yeah, and I can't wait for Born Again too. And I think Midnight Suns rumor has it will be uh, Michael Giacchino directing. He did that incredible uh, oh God, horror again. Horror. Yeah, but Werewolf by Night. Yeah. yeah, so much I forgot about. Which was also one of the good swings in the bad swing. That was in yeah. that era. That was great. Vibrox, what's up, Vibrox? Naruto, Sasuke. May the rejects prosper. Happy Saturday, good sirs. Thank you so much, man. I love your thumb, by the way. Thank you so much for that super chat. RG2088, I'm thrilled Netflix Marvel's now canon, especially with John Bernthal's return. Ain't that I good love news? how much people are loving Bernthal, man. That's Dude, great. I told you. That's why I put him on there. It says the Supergirl. Thumbnail. Should they bring back all the main characters? Personally, I feel like the actor, Iron Fist actor, deserves another chance. <laughs> You Hot mean take. you mean Colleen Wing deserves another yeah, chance? Yeah, if anyone comes over. You mean is... Jessica Henwick deserves another chance? One of the highlights of Matrix 4. She was good. Jessica Henwick is always great. She was good. And that was one where I personally was like, I'm all for this season two choice they made. Because more Henwick. Because she is the best part of I, this I show. I have like <laughs> a, a high school, college-esque caliber crush on Jessica Henwick. It's like when you're a kid and you're like, oh, no, anything they do, I'll go see. Like Jessica Henwick is just so captivating. I hear she's a bitch in real life. Oh, no. I'm so I haven't heard, never heard that, so anything I, about her. She, I, I'm just, my God, Jessica Henwick. So, yeah. I have never uh, heard a single thing about Jessica her. Jessica Henwick as Iron Fist, bring her back. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like Finn Jones wouldn't want to come back. I feel like uh, the end of season two of Iron Fist was about to be an incredible show, but I feel like it's too far gone. Of Danny Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he learned to fight. The like immortal Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. Danny Ray. But he was, yeah. He was awful. You know, I, I don't even remember, which is not a good sign. He was genuinely, he was not good in that show. I really, I thought he improved, markedly improved in season two. I liked season two, actually. I, I remember that now. I remember being like, oh, nice turnaround here. Yeah. Um, but man, that first season, that was rough. Uh, Samil, I heard the same. Jessica turned on a role in Shang-Chi because she was hopeful that the character would come back. I would love if that happens with uh, the, the everyone else coming back, but we'll see. Yes. Hayden Center, 259 subs. Thanks for all you do. You're, you're welcome. The Hayden. We uh we inspired him to start a channel. He's at 259 subs. Talk to that guy. Did we Sunday. really? Yeah, that's what, that's what he Channels claims. Channels growing and growing. Excited to meet y'all one day, hopefully. Hayden. Hayden. I expect you to be at 400 subscribers by June 1st. And if you are not there, maybe considering deleting the channel. No, no, no. You're too young to take a joke don't, like that. Don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. Don't put that. You keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Greg should not I teach. Should, should not be sarcastic about that. <laughs> you keep going. That's incredible, man. 259 is is like that. Think about that in a room, right? I was really struggling because I work on all these channels that have these giant numbers, and I have friends that have giant numbers on social media. And whenever I look at my numbers, I'm always like, and I feel bad. But then I realize uh, I, I just hit 22,000 on my YouTube, and I realize that is a town. And that was insane. So when you look at like what you've built, 259 people is an entire assembly room. Like if you were standing on a stage looking out at 259 mm. people, that is a huge room. So a huge congratulations because that is something to be very proud of. That's uh, that's like a torture room. I yeah. Mean, for like, you know. You heard a lot of like people. Army there. people, you know. Yeah, yeah. just trap them. Yeah. Um, 259 subs. That brings me back to the days. I, you know, I, remember I used to like count like, huh, we need 10 subscribers a day. So if we keep doing this, then we can get to 20 subscribers a day. And then what will that? I used to do that math all the time on the way back. I've been looking at my analytics. I've been looking at like, okay, I'm going to hit this by this and this by this. If I can do this. So enjoy that that, that run, man. Congratulations, Hayden. Proud of you. Mustafa Jav. Thank you. If Spider-Man 4, Rami Malek is happening. Yeah. I'd love to see old man Parker fight Vulture's son. Wow, that'd be a leap. That'd be like... We're hip. We're skipping to Spider-Man Six, right? Yeah, there. yeah. I think you should fight Vulture first. <laughs> yeah, I think you should fight Vulture. Yeah. <laughs> also, they're both like you know older. Well, it would be interesting if they if he just kind of did his original Spider-Man Four plan, B- 
because as much as I like me Michael Keaton in a good twist, he wasn't the vulture that we all kind of know the vulture to be. He was more like a Green Goblin vulture mix, which I liked for the movie, yeah. but we haven't seen Adrian Toomes. No, yeah. like I want like the crazy, weird, scientist, bald vulture. <laughs> like, it's it's like funny. <laughs> Adrian Toomes in the MCU is one of my favorite villains, but he's also a great example of serving the story for the story. Like He's not Adrian Toomes. But that's kind of like, uh, what's it called? Um, um, the If the Silver Surfer is a female. If it's done well, it's great. Like, that's a perfect example of, like, the writing yeah. was good. It's okay if you change a character. So I'd love to see a more comic-y vulture. Um, it was supposed to be um, John Malkovich. And it was supposed to be... Uh, that'd be great. I think, to me, I'm that's like, that's... Bananas. That screams the vulture, I, I imagine. And that would yeah. be still great. Yeah. And then, uh, what's his... Uh, Anne Hathaway was going to be Black Cat before she was Catwoman. Oh, nice. Yeah. She was destined for cat suits. You know what? I got a controversial opinion here. I think Anna Hathaway is hot. I don't, is that controversial? I don't know. She gets a lot of crap she on the internet. She gets a lot of crap, but everybody gets a lot of crap. She's amazing. I think she's... I know. Worked on two movies Do with her. Remember, like, in The Dark Knight Rises? The bike? On the bat bike? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Like, wow. That changed things. Forever. You shook Kenya. We were vibing. We hit that one. point in yeah. the <laughs> And I appreciate it. Um, hey, handsome fellas. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> the Hyper Invincible <laughs> Season 2 wasn't as intense as Season 1. Do you think splitting the season into two parts was a mistake? Should they pivot Season 3 to keep the same release structure? I think they should definitely not split it up. Um, I didn't even hear it was back until yeah. like Episode 3 of it being back. Amazon is not the greatest at their marketing. Distributor. Um, and I, I feel like Invincible especially, like, that I really loved this last season a lot, and I I put it above the first season for me. It might not feel as complete, but I still ultimately put it above the first. And it does feel like the conversation around it just kind of people we get released. People, I remember that happened with part one too, like oh, Invincible's out. Like, yeah, it was like all right, but people for, cool. don't, don't realize it's and out. And half the yeah. comments are like, oh, this is out. Yeah, not yeah, great. and and the cli- and and it's like it's cliffhangers. Like, the cliffhanger season one is brilliant, right? You want to find out. And the cliffhangers are not as strong in, like, season four, part one. Or even the cliffhanger for season two is not as strong as, as season one in terms of, like, the cliffhanger. Um, that's not it's talking about its overall storytelling. And I do think that because of that reason, yeah, they shouldn't be splitting it up. They might as well just get them all done and then put them out. I don't understand why. I really don't understand I think why they, they were trying because the show was so big. They yeah. were like, "Let's try a new model." It didn't work. And I'm and they keep changing their release times. Like Disney was doing the six a.m. The Invincible yeah. was doing five p.m. Now they're back to midnights. And I'm like, guys, I be consistent. Want to sleep? And we want to help you. But I also, I liked what you were doing before. <laughs> Mid- Midnight X Men was so hard when they went to Loki at six. I was like, thank you. I've been waiting years for this. And, and so much of their marketing is people doing what we do. So it's like, uh, be an asset for all of us. Yeah. Tend to us. Take Disney. care of us. You take care of us. Oh. We take care of the masses. Also, <laughs> X-Men Saturday morning. It writes itself. It writes itself. Yeah, what, man? Yeah, you freaking... You guys it was right it. there. All the nostalgia we could Jeez. be having. We'd be eating cereal reacting. I know We'd this is so your happy. question, Aisha, but Jesus... Jesus. Um, yeah, so keep it as one season for season three. Keep it together, and, I, and I, I'm and i going to catch up. But I mean, yeah. our videos still did well, so Good. I'm grateful for that. They're no, none of them were like season one views. Fair. But they were still well. Uh, okay. uh, someone asked in the chat, girl crushes at the moment, uh, my girlfriend who was in the chat. Oh, Koi's girlfriend, easily. Who was in the chat. Yeah, obviously. definitely. That's definitely. It. There it is. Greg's married. Yeah. <laughs> Stop a job. I hate... Charlie Cox's Daredevil beard. Thoughts? I love it. I think he looks great with it. Yeah, I'm excited to see a different take. I love his beard. Wait, no, he's got like a big beard? No, no, like the stubble. But in the comics, he has a beard, and I think it distinguishes runs the comics well. So I think I'm excited to see if they're going to do the stuff that that might reflect. I I think it's a cool way to distinguish itself. I I think the way how um, Charlie Cox is illustrated is so much more relatable than how when I read the comics where he's like, just a sexy blonde <laughs> playboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at this hot priest. He's, yeah, he's just like so hot. Man, Andrew Scott would be a fun daredevil, like an alternate daredevil. Andrew Scott, hot priest. Andrew Tate. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, that guy's clearly relatable and charming. Brendan Jed. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I got a question for you. Every live stream from here on out, we're going to be asked about this, and I can't wait to answer it with a different take every time. Ready. What do you think Matt Shackman's plan is with the Fantastic Four? If it is a trilogy, including team-up movies, I feel like that's out of his hands. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's really going to be. I'm sure he has hopes. I think that's what they do. I think they give a lot of these directors and creatives hopes, and they say, hey, create a big plan. But, you know, we're just going to honor it. <laughs> you had, like, Green Goblin voice for a yeah, second there. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, I think um, I'm hoping he's focusing just on the first movie because of how much it's going to blend in the Secret Wars and everything. That like, There's a 10-year plan always, but I think that Marvel's restructuring to focus on the, on the soon right now. So I hope that it doesn't rely on a trilogy structure. Soon. I would like a trilogy. But I, I assume he's just focusing on getting them brought into the universe in a really comfortable way. And then we can worry about how cool it's going to be to see Joseph Quinn and Tom Holland. But for now, focus up. Yeah, dude, I love Joseph Quinn. Uh, he is getting an award at CinemaCon, so I'm hoping to talk to him a little about it. Oh, oh, good. Good. Is the award um, good internet connection for a stream at a hotel? Yeah, the award is best Zoom connection for a show that stars Marvel characters at midnight. Congratulations, Coy. It's going to be your, your ranting has led you to an extra half hour today. Uh, our ranting. Way, way our ranting. Do you really think I ranted as much as you today? You were all about identity politics and how important it is that people be seen and representation for I all. I want balls on my silver surfer. <laughs> What's that meme with the dude that like that guy sitting down on the bed and just like hanging hog? That'd be so funny if Silver just, River just I had just like want to go back and swinging I, pipe. I think I want to just create that argument online and and have people think that I really believe that the Silver Surfer originally had balls. We should come from a place of like Deadpool's rated R. I think there should be more rated R properties, and Silver Surfer should get the dick and balls. Yeah. He <laughs> I want to see his Surfer phallically charged. Exactly. The power cosmic. Um, I don't know what hell divers is, my friend. Yeah, his name. First time donating. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping FX Legion will come back. I want to see a multiversal family drama playing Deadpool three. That is that one. Sh Legion is the one show in this comic book world where I have also been programmed to only watch comic book shows that are created linked to a bigger universe. <laughs> um, but I think I'd be like its own, like Invincible. And it it's like its own thing. Yeah. But like like Legion is Marvel adjacent. But I'm like, but it's not canon. So no, he's in it. That ties with the other stuff. I don't even watch this shit, do I? I don't even watch it. But it's the one that I, I really want to watch. Yeah. I still am like, I got to check this out. It's just Dude, so Aubrey Plaza and like the, the performance. I've only seen the first season because I just got busy. Aubrey Plaza is Amber Mid Thunder. In Legion? Yeah. Aubrey Plaza's in it. Really? Yeah. I thought it was Amber Mid Thunder. Maybe they're both in it. I'm ninety percent sure I'm thinking of the, the right show, and it's Aubrey Plaza. Chat will tell us in no chat. Time. Who's who's in um um is it Amber Mid Thunder or Aubrey Plaza? Also, Castle Grayscale. I love you pitching um Yaya as Silver Surfer, so we can hang dong in a comic thing again. Yeah. Anyway. This is my first CinemaCon. But thank you for that for this being your first time uh, contributing. And yeah, I would love to go. Wa I, I want to watch Legion and multiversal family drama. That sounds like a great idea. Also, it would be fun to have at least a cameo of them because I think there's going to be multiversal hopping in Deadpool. So this is the uh, a chance for them to come back, which is cool. Absolutely. Dan V900. Dan V900. I don't care. Oh, they're both in it. Oh. I don't I'm care both right. for the Silver Surfer casting unless Galactus is Franklin with another universe. Hot take. Uh, Galactus in the first film is still crazy. I love the slot in Alred, uh, Silver Surfer, Roman, Norn, and Dawn. Give me that. I love that run, too. Uh, but I think what's going to happen is Galactus is going to be maybe the reason they change multiverses. Like, maybe they have to escape Galactus. So I think using Galactus narratively could be a fun device. Uh, I think you should save Doom as a Palpatine, so I, I like Galactus for the first villain personally, because it's not like Galactus needs a lot of backstory. Uh, Galactus is like, I devour world, what up? Like, I think he's a good first movie villain. I think he's a big presence. I think it establishes a very different tone. I think it gives scope. Personally, I'm very excited for Galactus. I think he should be the first villain. 
and Mr. Fantastic has to stretch his way from kills him, <laughs> just like Marv. <laughs> the Gen, Gen of Gen. Great seeing you at WonderCon. Hope to see you again soon. Of course, Jen, we love you. She Jen brought us snacks. Always bringing us snacks, the looking best. out for us. Could use a Jen right now. Yeah, Greg could use the blood sugar boost because he is hangry. I am hungry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could eat anything that is not meat right now. <laughs> I, Pescatarian. I, I would love I would love a good snack. And Jen is always looking out for us. She is she at like Comic Con. I hung out with her. The whole time she mm -hmm. showed us around town. She's great. She's freaking she's she's amazing. And she abides. Thank you, Jen, for being a, an amazing human being. Thank you, Jen. Frank, let me just confirm this is the last one, Coy. Well, be before you uh, shit your pants out of enthusiasm, Coy. I mean, it happened before, it'll happen again. Um, everyone be quiet. Yep. Everyone be quiet. Wait Everyone be it. quiet. Ignore the weird it. screen on screen. Yes, things happening. Here we Ignore are. Uh, Prey was fire. I should totally agree. Had made Ivory Plaza. Also had. Okay. Also had. All right. Okay. Plaza. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what, what we're going to do. do. We're going to read the last stream lab. Okay. Oh, you, you told me to remind me about Marley, by the way. I will look up Marley. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The last stream lab is here from Jacob Neptune. Cool name. Been a while since hopped into a stream like the bunny I was. So happy to be here. If they pivot to a doom, do you think there will be gloom? Do you think we TV show about him coming to power in Latveria and the MCU events are backdrop to his own story? I'm picturing historical drama quality of a show. Oh, my God. I think if you did this show, you get Ridley Scott to direct it, Joaquin Phoenix to play Dr. Doom. You get something that is incredibly disappointing in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think a, a fun, like, 1800s period piece, but it's about like, very, like, present, but set with that, like, the great tone would be amazing. I know that, now, speaking of uh, Legion, Noah Hawley, the creator of the showrunner Legion, had written a Doom movie before all the um, Fox rights went over to Marvel and it was going to be, like, an independent thing. I'd love to see something from Noah Hawley, maybe long form as a show. Um, I do think we could do Doom long form. Uh, I don't know if they'd want to with how Disney Plus is getting restructured. It does seem like they're doing less Disney Plus. But I love the idea of a Latveria show, especially with the period PC stuff you could play with. Uh, and Matt Colton, I did watch the Deadpool musicals. They're made by a, a buddy of mine, Julian Higgins. So I actually was supposed to cameo in one of them, but schedules didn't align. So I have seen them. He asked. Yeah, me you know, it would be kind of like they have that Wakanda show coming out. And I think once you're developing these different communities and cities, oftentimes you do feel like you don't get to really spend time with them. And I think I think that would be an interesting gateway into actually feeling connected to some of these and actually mm -hmm. feeling like Latveria was a place i do yeah. worry that if we're introducing things quickly it'll be like he's the ruler of Latveria. and we visit it for 30 seconds you know it's like there okay there was um how much i find gotham mm. gotham not not the show but the uh, gotham is the show sure but like part of Batman world, Gotham is a character. Right. Very important. And oftentimes I feel like that's what these properties are sort of missing. Like that's what sort of excited me about what James had said about Metropolis. Again, man. I can't describe yeah. Metropolis. I'm excited to. And and I think uh, when it comes to a lot of these cities and stuff, like how many times have we been to Madripoor? Once? Twice? Mm. Was it just Falcon Winter Soldier? Maybe, but it, I'm like, th these places we go to should feel like a character in and of yeah. themselves. And uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm essentially getting at with the prospect of Latveria. is feeling like, oh, I, I really understand uh, the vibe here. Uh, the Doomer says Doom's backstory is really hard to translate to new moving parts. I think after Ironheart and I think after the Agatha show, it'll be easier because the witchcraft stuff with Doom's mom, it's it, Doom is magic plus science, so... I think you can actually get there. I think part of the reason that Agatha show exists is to help Doom's backstory. Hot take. Fair enough. Frank Alasio, Alasio, cheers from Laredo, Texas, y'all. Much love. How do you think the inheritors will make an appearance on a Spider-Man beyond the Spider-Verse? <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. 
<laughs> and there goes our Texas audience <laughs> forever. I'm going to need my tooth again. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I bet sorry to be from Texas and not Into one, full not one of them has Southern accent. Yeah, I know a lot of people from Texas. They do not sound that way. <laughs> so many people. They never do. Uh, it just went for the Appalachia 1800s. Uh, I think the Inheritors <laughs> might make a cameo. I think it'd be kind of fun for the comic fans to get a Beyond the Spider-Verse Inheritors moment because that is the Spider-Verse. But Spider-Verse Do you now, Carl? <laughs> yep, I do. I do, but I think the uh, Spider-Verse has veered so far away from the comics, they don't need the Inheritors. And I think the big thing is going to be man versus self. It's Miles versus Miles. It's Miles versus Miles um, a- a- without his, his lineage. Like, like I love that <laughs> Spider-Man is with great power. There must also come great responsibility because his parents were Aunt May and Uncle Ben. And he lost his father figure. I think it's a really interesting commentary to have what would Miles have been without his father because that's something we never really got to see to scale with young Peter Parker. So I think Miles is a unique opportunity to tell a Spider-Man story we'll never see with Peter Parker. So I really hope they focus on that nature-nurture concept with uh, his uncle Aaron and the loss of his dad and all that stuff. So I think that's going to be the focus for three. And I think uh, we might get some comic-y stuff in there, like actual Spider-Man comic in the Beyond the Spider-Verse. Shut up. <laughs> just making stuff up uninformed all right wait i saw a couple of super stickers come in here yeah there was a big one they're the end up. of the day what about super marley? stickers Are we looking up marley? i will look up marley brady thomas brady thomas with the ultimate stickers thank you so much my friend you a sexy man brady thomas Sexy. Who is Marley? What do we got? Marley Morgan. No, oh, no we, we didn't did skip that. One. We okay. did that one. I was, I was told to remind you. We did yeah, get the retro we did. future. We did We're not that. answering it again. No, we covered it. But thank you. Guys, I had a great time at this stream. I think it's thank so you. funny. I want someone to do a super cut of every time Greg does a, a live and he goes like, you don't always forget how much I like doing the lives. It's like that is the tradition. Greg doesn't do them for a month. He I comes just, back and he goes, these are fun. I that wasn't my tone right now. My tone was, um, I got to lie to this audience and make them think I oh, enjoyed that was being your tone. here. Well, that might be but the always God tone. God damn, man. Texas. You don't shut up, Cole. It's true. It's true. I'm just calling you out. You just keep talking. And I will. Uh, I guess that's where we are. That's, I mean, that's why, we're, that's why I'm here. Just trying to make this look slightly pretty as, uh, we, as, we, as, yeah, as we end the stream. Yeah, yeah, this is what the whole time it looked like this. Uh, my mom stayed for like an hour and a half. Much love to my mom in the chat. She's my got the same last stayed. name as me. So that's um, easy to find. My mom's here. Uh, I want to shout out my girlfriend who popped in. That was very <laughs> sweet. Jacob Neptune, RG2888. Oh, thank Christian you, John Perry, for giving us a, a super chat there. But no, yeah, guys. Um, the goal here, obviously so, is for Koi to do these more solo without us being here. And uh, so we had John and me. We had you first and then John yep. and then me. And we did one with me solo with Enrique offsides. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, um, but the but I think that, uh, you know, Koi's obviously, he's always the star of these live streams for a reason. Because he, he won't shut up and let him not be the, the star. <laughs> not by choice. <laughs> We're trying to get some of the spotlight, but like, oh, just he sit is back just and like, like well, I'm just going to turn this, this light towards me for a second. I can actually turn the, the uh, camera a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, it's been, uh, but no, we just want, I, I feel like Koi's excellent at, the, at these. And, uh, and I appreciate everyone who's been here. Really appreciate everyone who's been contributing to our super chats and stuff. Uh, you know, you guys contributed your harder hard-earned dollars our way does mean a lot and we hope that we bring some level of value to you guys even if it's a moment of entertainment or escapism or something like that thank you helps to keep the lights on helps to support people like koi especially you know because he constantly is begging for more mm-hmm. scraps i'm just yeah. sitting outside <laughs> i come to greg's house a little bowl and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he's like please mr greg and he's like back in the shed <laughs> back in the take shed. the oranges and go in the shed yeah. it's like a real barbarian <laughs> situation. really intense yeah. yeah no i only can wear real reject shirts on the property and there's a shed with whipping so um so yeah, i appreciate you guys. you guys being live so you can see that greg doesn't abuse me and he's being nice before we leave so the torment can begin yeah but thank you guys so much for uh being here and thank you koi for rocking it as always thank Thank you for asking for Koi's Comic Corner back. You guys wanting it. We always talk about, like, leave a comment if you want more of the show. You guys are the reason it's coming back, so thank you, and that'll yeah. be dropping soon. And uh, seriously, thank you for supporting us and helping us to keep uh, cultivating a more positive community. And even though sometimes we touch on subjects that we know create a discourse online, 
Uh, at the same time, I see in the chat that generally it's a pretty, uh, pretty reasonable chat. So I hate to guys. pick favorites. This is my favorite uh, live live chat. Like I think this was the best like community. We talked about things that can be, uh, you know, cantankerous. You guys were great. So I mean, even if you disagree, you were always polite in it and well informed. So I appreciate yeah. that. Now it's you and I. Flex off at the end. <laughs> <laughs> So you got the it's coming in, Koi. It's coming in. But like, it's crazy how vascular you are Arr. while still having size. Whereas I'm like just bulk right now, which is okay. But, but when you're just sitting, you look buff, and I'm like, nah, you look all right, Craig. But then I gotta like do the whole thing, you know. This is how Koi. But and I probably I got like thirty pounds on you. Like I have a decent how, amount of just how mass. Koi and I do every and every stream. We just gotta, we gotta be. We gotta flex real, off our progress. Real heterosexual <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah, stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Covered the roadhouse. <laughs> roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see you guys. I totally forgot how to end a stream. Oh, that's going to be good. It's been a long time since I've ended a, a stream. There's going to be a post credit scene. I think, I, think like, I hit these two buttons. The files are inside the computer. This is not going to end smoothly. <laughs> just Prepare it's, yourself. It's just going to cut off randomly because I'm going to be hitting buttons. I, I can't wait for the rewatch thank audience you. to find thank, us flailing. Thank you, guys.